This episode of Your Mom's House is brought to you by Sattva Luxury Mattress, the only online mattress company that provides free delivery, setup, and mattress removal. Well, welcome. Welcome to Your Mom's House with Tom Segura, Tom Segura. and Christina Pajitsin. Welcome to Your Mom's House. All right. Support for your mom's house comes from Manscaped, who is number one in men's below the belt grooming. Manscaped offers precision engineered tools for your family jewels. If you have a hard time deciphering what something like that means, it means uh, your penis and your testicles and shaving the hair around them so that it doesn't get all in a lady's mouth or a nice guy's mouth oh boy. when they're giving you kisses there. So... I, a lot of times, have to work hard to make it look like I have a, you know, penis someone would want to touch. You know what I mean? It's not that, yeah. it's not that impressive. So discovering Manscaped for me was like discovering, I don't know, black t-shirts. I was like, yeah, <laughs> that's for me. You know what I mean? I often have nicked and cut and scraped or just gone without trimming the below the belt region and it's always a disaster and so manscaped definitely changed things for me the grooming game is different now inside when you order the perfect package 2.0 you'll find the electric trimmer called the lawnmower 2.0 waterproof and skin safe technology will protect you from nicking your sack and having a bloody bludgeoning mess of red sauce running down your legs. You can also create less mess by trimming in the shower. To get to those hard to reach places, you find the plow inside. The plow is a single blade razor that will prevent razor bumps. That's also good because even though a razor bump isn't, you know, the worst thing in the world, it doesn't look good and it can make somebody who's about to sit on your stuff or lick it think that you have an STD <laughs> and of course let's not forget about the crop preserver an anti-chafing ball deodorant and moisturizer you already put deodorant on your armpits if you're not a complete pig so why are you not putting deodorant on the smelliest part of your body your ding dong and your bean bag it's time to get clean with the perfect package 2.0 get 20% off plus free shipping with the code mom at manscaped.com. Always use the right tools for the job. Your balls will thank you. Get 20% off and free shipping with the code MOM at manscaped.com. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com and use our code word MOM. Thank you, Manscaped. Oh, are we ready to party? I think so. Is this it? We got all the business out of the way? Got the business done. OMG. You ready to we dance? so much to catch up on. I know, it's been a minute, man. And staff updates, our updates. It's a lot. Gosh. It's a lot. Let's get into it. Here we go. I once went to see a doctor with my mom. She wanted to see an acupuncturist that she had heard of. It turned out that this physician wanted to treat me as well. He was an old tiny Asian and he seemed harmless. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> Who is Randy? Don't bring anyone mother into this. Yo, mom in the fucking stand! Welcome. Welcome. Welcome to your mom's house with Tom Segura, Tom Segura. Like and Christina Pajitsin. Christina Pajitsin. Welcome to your mom's house.
All right. Wait, what's the point of that guy's song? Um, I'm trying to figure it out. Oh, okay. Just that well, he saw an acupuncturist and the guy was Asian. Well, I don't know. Let's see. Those freaking needles. Those freaking needles. I don't want acupuncture no more. Not acupuncture no more. Not acupuncture no more. I don't want acupuncture no more. Not acupuncture no more. Not acupuncture no yeah. more. You make sense now? Well, I do think he needs, he's not doing this on the right platform. This guy should be a solid TikToker. <laughs> Because this is the that is the perfect platform. He's wasting his talent. Well, on I like YouTube. you know a bland room. Um, <laughs> the bland the background. Uh, yeah, the background. The background great. sucks. I yeah. like the lack <laughs> of being in tune. I like the rambling stream of consciousness lyrics. <laughs> After my session with this doctor, I became sexually impotent. I also started to stutter and couldn't even read well. I became the king of the clumsy and befriended walls and door frames. What? Those freaking needles. Those freaking needles. Everybody needs an outlet, you know? Yeah. I do think someone should put music to this and make it good. Yeah, somebody could. Like, remember we did Machines with it. <laughs> machines with it. Damn. Machines, machines with it. That damn. ended up being a really good jam. Got a gun, got a gun, got a, a Terminator, Terminator gun. gun. <laughs> this is just talent that needs a good producer because yeah, he's got the bones. He's got the lyrics. He yeah. just needs a producer. <laughs> Send your emails <laughs> if you're out there. Your mom's podcast at gmail.com. In the uh, subject, please put acupuncture song. <laughs> Let us know if you can make those freaky needles a hit. <laughs> I don't want acupuncture no more. Not acupuncture no more. Not acupuncture no more. I don't want acupuncture no more. Not acupuncture no more. Not acupuncture no more. Like if you're it. listening to this song, okay, I'm do done. me a favor, yeah. share you. it with your friends. All done. Okay. All good. No All right. push. No push. more. <laughs> no. No, thank you. It's been a while. Um, I've been on the road. I ha I got... For fucking two weeks, you've been on the road, I got man. sick as fuck. So if you were out and you saw me in the last few weeks, thank you very much for coming out, first of all. Um you met Apes Grace on the road. Well, let's, let's, you're, ju mean, you're jumping way too well, far I'm ahead. just excited. I'm so, I'm so excited. That first week, which was um, Northeastern Dates, I did a, a show at Foxwoods. And Wait, Foxwoods Comedy Club, Casino Bar, Restaurant, <laughs> and Casino? When you play the club there, they go, <laughs> they used to, we used to work the club, they go, so you're working comics at Foxwoods. Yeah. And then they call you, hey, uh, you need to update... <laughs> on your website, the name, and you're yeah. like, why? It says comics at Fox. Yeah, it needs to say comics at, comics restaurant and bar at Foxwoods Casino. And you're like, wait, what? <laughs> they literally, I did comics, C-O-M-I-X yeah. in Foxwoods. They called my agent. Yeah, me too. And they said, Christina needs to update the thing Same to thing. say. Yeah, comics at Foxwoods Casino, comedy club, restaurant, and, and bar. bar. And you're like, why? <laughs> And why? So they want the, that <laughs> all in the stupid. in your website, and they're like, "This way, if somebody's going to the show, they'll know they can get food and drinks." Because <laughs> like, our business is primarily a food and drink a business. Food and yeah. drink business. Yeah. We don't give a fuck about the comedy. We're, we basically just work at Applebee's when you work at, <laughs> at, at a comedy club. <laughs> they do not. And they're like, and if you could, if you could put the specials under your. <laughs> Right by the date, that'd be great. Well, yeah, if she could write, we have truffle fries. There's truffle fries. There's some Atlantic <laughs> cod that we just got. If you if you could let them know. <laughs> Basically, that's what that was. Yeah. I mean, it can't. Their food can't be that great. It's a comedy club. Yeah. I mean, it could be fine. Wings. No. No, what, what, most what, what, most comedy most. clubs are dog shit. Yeah. Some of them have exceptional. Yeah. yeah. Exceptional. Some Flappers and Burbank, I think their their menu's exceptional. I'll say even and Schomburg Improv. Even the the killer uh, Love the yeah, chicken right. dish. The the killer clubs like Acme, he has a, a real restaurant, yes. Sticks, uh Wendy <laughs> at uh, at Comedy <laughs> Works that she actually has but she has a real restaurant, like a real right. you can go to her um <laughs> South Club and go upstairs to I think it's called Curtis. Yeah, you can just have dinner, and it's legit. It's a legit but, but restaurant. But she doesn't call the comic. No, and say, she doesn't can go you like, do? "Look, you're working, <laughs> you're working in October. No one knows they can eat there. You need to change <laughs> it's your." Literally, website. what 
what they do. It's so fucking hilarious. It's comedy. It's comedy works and yeah. sticks restaurant. Yeah. So <laughs> and Curtis restaurant it's comedy ridiculous. club bar. I finish. I do. I do the grand theater at so they, comics at, so, at foxwoods so and now they don't make you now now they don't grand do it. theater foxwoods no club bar restaurant now they casino. they they kind of leave you alone with that so i just did the show it was a fun show through the next morning <laughs> i wake up and i'm like fuck you know when you just you feel it did you're you, like did yeah. you wake up in the casino where you have the fake rocks and no, the no, fake no. waterfalls i um Shit. i kind of get i tell you i kind of get a little insulted <laughs> when you do like the big room at the casino and they put you in just like a regular room oh, at the casino like a imagine. regular hotel room and you're like you don't have a suite <laughs> for, for your for your like performers and they're like i mean we do <laughs> <laughs> and you're like i mean can i get it though <laughs> and they're like are you booking it and you're like no i'm you hired me and i brought a few thousand people here tonight can I have the nice room? And they're like, we'll see. <laughs> or when they're like, and, or you're like, um, what's to eat here? And they give you the the ticket to go eat with the employees. Oh, that's a great one. And <laughs> casinos, they're like, you can go to the kitchen. And you're like, what? <laughs> can I eat at the restaurant with other people? No, no, no. You got to mm. eat behind. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's so unglamorous to work a casino. It really it's, is. It's really it's fun. So but funny. I mean, look, it was it was actually a really fun show. The place is. <laughs> really nice it's enormous foxwoods comedy club casino no, no. bar restaurant foxwoods is casino is enormous I know. foxwoods with two x's um no are you sure yes are you really are you sure i think it's f-o-x-x woods <laughs> i don't I'm, think so i'm, I'm, I'm i don't think sure. so look it up i think there's two x's in foxwoods no uh-huh it's an up uh, it's an upper new york right yeah no it's one x far two yeah. x's three x's <laughs> no wait wait but look Triple look X. uh scroll like no no go back that could have been you is that you on the <laughs> look, look 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 resort covers an area of nine million square feet what yeah see the what? wikipedia nine million square feet that this is in mash Antucket. yeah that's where i did come that's, that's, yeah. that's right i remember yeah. now it is yeah. such there's four towers of I casinos know, i know it's, it's just nuts. it's so enormous this is the indian land right uh the Native correct American. term sorry, yeah sorry. jesus sorry. indigenous people sorry sorry there you go Fuck. Yeah. sorry Ugh. i was watching your <laughs> podcast and i was having fun until you disrespected the original people of this land jesus i, know. I mean you can't fucking say a thing I anywhere know. <laughs> well i'll tell you <laughs> I, uh, no, you can't see our producer highlighted our yeah, next topic apropos yeah, yeah it's true this, it was a but, good timing on which is dog. completely accurate and i'll get into that so look i um <laughs> i got sick and you know when you get like you feel it coming on and you just start the to go, AIDS, like, god the damn road it. aids yeah so we get on the bus and we go to hampton beach and i have two shows the next night so whenever you have two shows and you're starting to feel sick, you're like, this is evil. Because you're not, you know, you're not going to rest. Yeah, no, I know. So it's like, it's I start nightmare. taking, you know, zinc and vitamin C. It doesn't do shit. None do of that does fucking, fucking thing. thing. <laughs> it's all for you in your mind. It doesn't do fucking thing. And they're like, are you drinking water? And you're like, I'm drinking <laughs> a fucking gallon of water. You know what you should do? Lime water and yeah. honey. That'll fix you. I know. Oh, really? And then someone's like, okay. have you thought about resting? And you're like, yeah, no, I did. But I have two shows right now. So <sighs> then the next day we have burlington vermont also but fucking did amazing. you go to the coat factory yes it was great and i saw <laughs> bernie i was like free the burn so then i uh is that where he's from bernie saunders yeah the yes. old jew that's not gonna get elected because he's oh jewy now america's so anti-semitic right nadav not me i like him but there's no way america's gonna vote for the big i don't know i mean i've never Jew. heard that him being jewish is the reason yeah that that's oh. i think that's i think that's christina's original thought I, yeah I think, I, i've I, never heard that before <laughs> I, no. oh i bet you ask most americans that they're gonna vote for the no because he's a jew i bet you i bet you and, well they just they hated Christ. hillary because she's a woman right well i mean obama barely got it look in, i don't barely know, look, got look, it but he, they Paul, called him a barely a, got a, in twice Barely got no the first time, and they then they, the birther said that he was a Muslim. No, there's definitely that. people who would be like no idiots for sure. But but sorry, continue your thought. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So anyway, <laughs> I uh, vote for the Jew. I like him. 
I'm yeah. very pro-Jew, you know that. Yeah, you had it. And I voted for Obama twice. Was your first boyfriend Jewish? Yeah, two. I had two long-term Jesus Jewish boyfriends. Christ. I almost married a... a, a How do you say it? Jew? A Jew. Are you Yudin. He counts. He can count in Hebrew. Did you know Nadav speaks fluent? Yeah, of course. I didn't. I didn't know that until recently. Yeah. She's been having me count in in Hebrew uh, the it's last funny. couple episodes on WMMA. Really? Mm -hmm. I'm really, really impressed with that. And then she laughs at it. It sounds terrible. Can you tell me just one, two, three? It's disgusting. Listen. Ugh. Ugh. That sounds terrible. It's a beautiful sound. <laughs> it's rough sounding for sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's disgusting, so, right? Um. That's what Bernie Sanders is. All right, you fucking Jews. When he gets in the White House, he's going to talk all kinds of Hebrew. <laughs> Here's the thing about the old Jew. Yeah. He's going to sing the national anthem in Hebrew. I hope he gets the budget right. I know they're good at that. <laughs> all, right. all right. That's right. So I leave Vermont, go to Toronto. Oh, I love and the then T dot. I have two days off. Dude, I'm sleeping. 12 hours at night <laughs> and then taking three hour naps in the day and i'm thinking well if i do this for a couple of days i'll i just i'll feel better better by wednesday right well then it's like tuesday wednesday i wake up wednesday i'm like i feel like shit and now i gotta go to london london turn, ontario yeah do the show not london come England. back to toronto next day two more shows i start getting ivs mm. i start getting uh i have a doctor come and actually, I go like, because I can hear the, you know, the, the, in yeah. your lung. I'm like, you know, am I getting pneumonia? You could. And, and of you course. very well could on a, because you're in a different city. Uh, so I get, I get night. a B12 shot. I get two IVs. I get. The B12 helps though, right? It does. In the, at least like that day or shortly thereafter, you feel better. Yeah. Um, he gives me these med. He gives me meds. He gives me nasal sprays. He gives me a. But whatever. he can't give you meds. Wait, it was a viral. Yes, no, it's a doctor. Well, he's, you're right. It's a viral. So he's like, you don't have an infection, but he gives me meds in case oh, it goes, you go there. Yes, yeah. But then he's giving me other shit. He's like, you need to take this, and so I start taking it. But then it starts with Toronto. It starts two shows Toronto. Mm -hmm. Next morning, plane, fly oh, to Winnipeg. Two shows Winnipeg. <laughs> go to bed next day. Fly Vancouver. Two, so every day. You, you don't feel like you can get better. And I keep coughing and hawking shit up. And I'm like, God damn it. So I finally get back. And I'm thinking like, I'm, uh, I'm scheduled to do a David Spade show with Bert. And I go, hey, just so you know, I, I just give him the heads up. I'm, I'm sick. And uh, I just want to, you know, I haven't been improving this week. And that's coming up in a few days. And they're like, well, will you be better by then? And I'm like, yeah, I don't know. And they're like, well, you have to know. <laughs> I'm like, well... I don't know right now. That's why I'm calling you to give you the heads to up. To give you the, yeah, and they're to like, find another guest. Yeah, I go, just in case. And they're like, well, you have to decide whether you'll be ready, whether you'll not be sick on that day. And I go, well, then just, I, I think it's better to say no so that we don't get to that day. And I go, turns out I am really sick. Well, yeah, they should so, just have a guest on deck. So now I can't get And I just did Spade show too. It's, yeah. it's quite an, a day. You're spending your whole day doing it. It's not yeah. like they, they went, oh, it's only a half hour taping. Yeah, that's the taping. But you um, get called at 10 a.m. with the topics, yeah. the producer. It's a fucking whole deal. You well, need to rest. I'll tell you this. The being sick was such a fucking bummer. But those goddamn shows in Canada were amazing. Because the Canadians are the best. Yeah, my mother I man. fucking love Canada and I love doing stand up there. Oh, I can't wait to do it. I got to talk to Agent Jeans about this. Yeah. Agent Jeans, if you're listening, why? Every I show. I want to do Toronto. Man, every show was like. The T dots. Crazy. Is next. there a club in Windsor, Ontario, my birthplace, that I could do? Um, I'm doing I'm doing a casino there. Maybe I could do a Maybe casino. Maybe they'll give me a Windsor. nice room. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Um, and by the way, so the most exciting. It's crazy, right? Oh, uh, you brought 3,000 people here? <laughs> Uh, you're in 216 and you're next to Jim and, and, and Jake and they're going to the show. No. Like, <laughs> no, next to the elevator like you yeah. like and the ice the ice machine so you can hear clunk, 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 all night. And then you see people and they're like, what the fuck are you doing here? You're like, I'm doing the show. Oh, no, I know. <laughs> what do you think? I know. I went to the, I did this casino too in the middle of the country and the next morning I just went down to the casino, yeah. got my coffee and they're like, holy shit. You're yeah. here. I'm like, well, yeah, I'm the, me and the guy in the wheelchair and the other <laughs> Yeah, you're like, the venue won't help me hide. So I'm here with you. Basically. Like, I mean, yeah. No, I, I don't want to see you. 
but they're making me. See, I'm a personality champ. I like to meet people. Yeah. And I actually Dude, like the fans. By the way, I'm so happy to have this podcast because <laughs> literally every single person I meet apologizes for meeting me. <laughs> Like, they all go, like, I know you don't want to do this. <laughs> like, I meet them on the street, and they're like, oh, hey, they're like, I know you don't want to say hi, but <laughs> can I say hi? And I'm like, yeah, of course. Yeah. No, but, and then when they meet me, they're like, Tom would never do this, huh? Yeah. And I go, never. Make sure to tell him. That's such bullshit. Now, on the good news, I've become friends with a few of my TikTok friends. <laughs> I've been DMing with yeah. um, 95 pigeons. Yeah. Great work. Oh, that's the, uh, for people that know, that's like put spit. If, I would, if this cup was your mouth yeah. and the coffee was spit. Yeah. yeah. We've been uh, it's a great DMing. TikTok, yeah. um, we're going to have coffee when I come to New York. Um, sweet kid. And uh, also, Apes Grace came to visit you. I facilitated that as Holy well. Holy shit. And that's the, do we have her work? Do you have her, her on deck? If not, that, no big. No? Mm, not yet. Give me a second. Well, well, and I also like to show a 95 pit if we have that one. I don't know where that one is. Yeah. That one's a pretty good one. He's got some good ones too. But Apes Grace, we were D DMing and you visited her. Yeah. Oh, is that her? There yeah. she is. Let's play. <laughs> yeah. There, here it is. Hi, this is Apes Grease with an important question. Do you ever worry that you're retarded and no one is telling you? Well, it's true. <laughs> That's the best. She came to my show in Winnipeg. I know. Yeah. I I'm know. telling the audience. I know. I'm just yeah. so excited. I, look, look I, I'm just excited that worlds are colliding. And how was it to meet Apes Grease? I mean, it was a thrill, you know. I, yeah. uh, I, was, I couldn't believe it. I was like... And then I posted a picture of her and they went and the, all the people were so, they were like, this is like inception shit. Like people were, <laughs> couldn't great. believe it. It was great. Uh, yeah. She was very nice, very sweet, um, very thoughtful. And yeah. I, had a, I had a nice time well, meeting her. Yeah. She DM'd me this morning and asked if it was worth getting her passport rushed or should she, should she do a regular mail? I know. She just asked me a random question. I go, just regular mail. Yeah. You don't need to <laughs> I mean... There's no reason. If you have a trip coming up. Yeah, a trip coming up. But like, she didn't mention a trip. Like, I wish Josh Potter would get his rushed so I could fucking finalize my... Oh, man. European travel. We got all kinds of updates. He's like, he's like, well, I got an assault charge from <laughs> 2012. I got to see if that can get kind of clear uh, up. <laughs> assault charge. He does not have an assault charge. <laughs> I remember charge. one time I uh, <laughs> shit outside of a school and they got pissed. That is not true. Guy's got warrants. Anyway, what kind of warrants does he have, really? No, it's not. It's minor stuff. It's, it's like, like minor DUIs. sex crimes. Yeah. So. <laughs> <That's stupid. laughs> oh my god! He's tell you. Uh, yeah, but um, to everybody that came out to all those shows in the U.S. and in Canada, I thank you. I have to do Canada. It's oh, really great. Oh. oh no, this is the different. This no, is but this him. is your guy though. Oh, this is ninety five pigeons. Yes. Yeah, yeah, this isn't the original, but this is just a message. This to is you. a message, a personal oh. one. So this is how my relationship has grown with my, my TikTok. The he's got a lot. Are, he's got a lot of tats. Huh? He has a lot. He's just got facial tattoos recently. Um, sweet kid, I re like I said I really like these people. Yeah. And I've been DMing with a few. These people. These TikTok. Guys. This is for Christina P and Christina P only. <laughs> Very flattered. Put me on your podcast already. Please interview me. I see you lurking on my page. Please. <laughs> so he originally came up with the, this is, I wish this coffee was your yeah, spit. Uh, right. Um, yeah. So that's it. And Okay. This is a, is that like a direct message right there? Yeah. He made a TikTok for me. He put it on his profile. Isn't I that see nice? you lurking on my page. <laughs> <laughs> is it really lurking if I openly like and support? Oh, I don't no. know what the kids are calling it, but I openly like and support. You know what? What's um, what's really a thing here is that we're all talking about TikTok, but <laughs> our own Josh Potter <laughs> is a TikTok is on Cameo. He I just mean, joined. It's so bizarre. Um, do you know about this? I kind of saw a little bit. He did on Uber, on, on Uber, on Uber, on Instagram. Uh, uh, he did. He did an Uber. He did an Uber. Hey, he yo. <laughs> hey, yo. Take your Ubers. <laughs> you know, be safe out there. We out here. We up out We up out here. We up out of here. Dead ass. Dead ass. <laughs> so what gave you the... Um, 
the inspiration to join Cameo? Well, I uh, I was approached by the folks at Cameo. Oh, oh. Stop. <laughs> I was. Yeah, they sent you a message. Yeah, they sent me a message, and I said, "Well, there's something to be had here as a uh, <laughs> panty aggregator and a." Uh, foot consultant I thought <laughs> why not dip my toe so to speak into the pool and become a sex worker myself and <laughs> I have I've become a sex worker now <laughs> so yeah it's going great what are great. you talking I'm, about I'm what do you one mean one a sex worker two a comedian three a podcast producer what so. what do you mean by a sex well, worker well look for right now on the screen <laughs> We have, first of all, what made you choose your price point? $20 is a deal. That is a deal. Well, they start you at 15 as the floor, and I thought, you know, I'm a little better than that, but I also want to keep things affordable for right. people out there because I respect uh, a hard day's work, you know, and so I thought I'd keep it, you know, kind of light. And if you want to tip, because you can tip on there, if you want to get into some private sort of things, we can do that. I'm setting up an OnlyFans account and a Fan Centro, uh, perhaps as well. Only fans allows you to really push the envelope. <laughs> well, that's where we can get into the nitty gritty. Okay. Yeah. We um, can do some what, custom. Well, here we have, what, I have. Wait, hold on. What will you be showing on, if somebody does do your fans only account? What kind of stuff will they be seeing? What it's all they? custom work, so it's uh, we can discuss. <laughs> they can those make things, requests. You see, and then we yeah. can discuss price points. Are you talking about showing your your kibbles and bits? Uh, listen, if if the price, the price is, is right, right. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Wow. Yeah, because, like, here's the thing. I wouldn't mind throwing you a grand to watch you jerk off or something. You know? yeah. <laughs> a grand, you know, that would be right around the price range for something like that. Wait a minute. Nice. Now, you mean to tell me that you, you really would masturbate for $1,000 and have that video floating around? Of course. Around? Yeah, people do that for free. Yeah, but he wants to be a comedian. You don't think that's going to haunt you? I want to be, be a sex worker He's a and then a comedian. <laughs> sex worker. He is a comedian. Yeah. What if he does become a sex worker? He I is. am a sex worker. I know, but like a big, big, like what if that's your Listen, I would be thing? so proud of him. Your sex worker shame, Christina, is yeah. very, very problematic. <laughs> and for the community, I have to represent them now and... I agree. Yeah. I gotta tell you, sorry, I, we are. Uh, I need to be. I need to be. You're educated my here. wife, but I stand with Josh. Okay. Now let's let's <laughs> okay. get into the, like yeah, your first uh, request here <laughs> yeah. on Cameo. It says uh, it's a, it's from Michael. He says I live in Wyoming, so it's kind of hard for me to come to your shows, but I love your comedy and YMH <laughs> appearances. So I thought twenty dollars was nothing for all the laughs you've given me. It's up to you what you do, man. I know whatever it is, it'll be hilarious. And then we have your uh, <laughs> your video. Yeah. Okay. What's up, Michael? I'm sorry you live in Wyoming. Uh, not because Wyoming isn't a beautiful place, but because I don't know when I'm going to get out to Wyoming. Uh, and I would like to, because I think I would enjoy it there quite a bit. In the meantime, though, I want to make your $20 worth it. And I want to give you the hot feet action that you so crave. Mm, take a look at that. Ignore the dirt on the bottom. That's just from a hard day's work. Take a look. Mm. Which toe does it for you? Uh. This one's my favorite. <laughs> How about this guy? Oh, where did uh. he come from? Oh, boy. <laughs> wow. Look at how majestic. This is a peek inside of your real room, too, right? <laughs> yeah. What is that? Is there a blanket a, in your room? Yeah. <laughs> no, no, not at the moment. There's so much. Okay. I had to remove the blanket There's for the so feet. There's so much. So because we, we don't want anything in the way, you know. Uh, right. The obstructing the view. Yeah. Now, I have to go to Goodwill. You notice the bag in the back. Wait, no, I, I want to. There's what? so much to go over in that video. First of all, your feet are very hairless, which is surprising. I thought for sure you'd have Sasquatch feet. Interesting, right? Yeah. Um, you notice the, the blinds behind him, the mm -hmm. makings of a really disturbing YMH <laughs> video. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, I thought about Josh a lot yesterday Aww. because <laughs> I was watching season two of Mindhunter on Netflix <laughs> and and then I was watching some YouTube videos yeah. of some interrogations of some uh, some some they got some confessions out of some murderers cool. and they're really cool videos <laughs> and I don't know I, I could see like if things were dialed just a couple degrees another way, I feel like I could see you in one of those. You know? Oh, my God. Well, I told you when I went to visit Robert Paul Champagne that <laughs> I am just a few <laughs> terrible things happening for being Robert Paul Champagne. <laughs> terrible so. things. 
I, I wouldn't. Hey, he wouldn't say his life is terrible. He's got those antiques. Not at all. Oh, I'm not saying his life's terrible. Yeah. I'm saying I'm just a couple terrible things from becoming Robert Paul Shannon. Okay. Yeah. And then my life would well, let's well be Well, um, let's see. Look, request number two here. Yes, says, keep going. For Aaron, <laughs> can you text a video to my buddy and call him A-A-Ron and then say something dirty about him fucking your feet? <laughs> I think he'll love it. Thanks, wow. man. Wow. That's from Tony. Wow. And then here's your video. <laughs> All right. This oh, message is from filters. Tony. It goes out to his buddy, A.A. Ron. Yo, what's up, dude? I hear you want to fuck some feet, bro. <laughs> Do you want to fuck some feet or what? <laughs> Let's pretend this guy is your tiniest penis. Oh, you my God. You want to fuck some feet with what it. What do you say, dog? Super. I, I made 20 bucks from these guys out. Oh, my God. Huh? Ugh. Oh, pee -pee. oh god! Tiny pee -pee like oh. Is that what you want, you dirty what's, boy? Is that ink on your you second know? toe? Put your tiny pee, -pee Look what's in on here. <laughs> Can you see? Oh it? Jesus! Jesus! Okay, oh, I don't need oh. any more. I got it. This is hard. Look this at his hard. arms. Look at Josh's Gross. arms. I know. Tom, boy, you hmm? pause it on his arms. Look at those upper arms, Josh. Yeah. Look at that. Look at the mm -hmm. shoulders. It's part of my niche. Uh, it's part of what you pay for when you come to my cameo. Yeah. Those shoulders are wild. Yeah. <laughs> that is some Teen Wolf shit, dude. Yeah. Yeah, I got that Utah jazz joint. <laughs> <laughs> Do people like your shoulders? Do they want to see your shoulder action? I haven't gotten that specific request on cameo yet, but the, you know, it's existence is young you know well so. look I, I'm, I gotta tell you I'm a little nervous yeah I feel like you're gonna leave us soon I mean the, these videos keep <laughs> requests keep rolling in dude I you know if I hit a certain mark I mean you never know where my career could go from here this yeah is, yeah yeah you know well could I you give us would, would you at least give me like a month heads up or something yeah of course okay. I mean mm. I could conceivably do both for a little while until it might get overwhelming <laughs> the requests you know after a while I'm gonna be like Tom I just I have to keep the foot content going I just or the the new shoulder content oh you should get into a bank account draining yeah mm -hmm. uh financial domination oh, fin dom fin dom yeah i would love to be a part of that i could be yeah for sure i'd be like you stupid fool give me your money you yeah. know like stuff like that that's now what do, right now and but the fact that you're you little you know, bitch this, give me my amazon is, wish list <laughs> <laughs> this is just a taste of what that only fans account's gonna be like right? yeah i think you should play the next one though oh okay um it gets a real in there do i need to read the request sure just play the video if you have it oh my god okay this is for father's day oh my god in australia <laughs> Uh, make sure you say he is an amazing dad and husband. <laughs> Please be shirtless and say that hairy men are gods. He is hairy. <laughs> and I love it. Say he sounds like the kind of guy that can make you come. Jesus. This is someone's request for their father? Your wish is my command on uh, Cameo. Oh, New request for no. Grant. Oh, my God. All right. Why, hello there, big boy. <laughs> I hear someone is an amazing dad and husband. <laughs> And oh my goodness, it's Father's Day in Australia. Oh. And so I thought from one shirtless hairy man god to another, I would wish you a happy Father's Day. So and it sounds terrible. like you, my friend, might be able to help me with my little situation. Uh. What's with as the far sound? As coming goes. That I don't now, know. Now, Fetus, Jess, Maddie, Savi, Henry, all of them want to wish you a happy Father's Day Jesus. as well. Oh, and because I can't go without, up. I've got to give you a glimpse. <laughs> what do you think of this guy? Look at how dexterous he is. Holy shit. Dexterous. Ew, my oh, stomach really God. just turned a little. You know what's really fucked up? Um, what's that? Like the sound one? quality? No. On I'm sorry that it might, it's my hair against my mic. You can see like my uh, uh, headphone mic yeah, is on know, my chest here. What's really, really fucked up that. is that this, is, uh, this episode's going to come out mm -hmm. real soon. And you're going to get bombarded. And you're, you're, <laughs> you're going to be making these like... for like a weekend. <laughs> I know you're gonna have to make like 80 fucking well, feet videos. As a sex worker, uh, <laughs> it is my cross to bear. And sometimes, if you are popular, it becomes a mountain that you can't. Well, you know, you start to get overwhelmed. You have to take a break. You know, Josh, you can't I'm, always just be content, content, content. And you I need know. Some time for yourself. Yeah, but you're doing $20 oh. videos, and then Cameo gets 25% yeah. for their cut. 
So I think you should increase your price after, especially after this air. I to think say. I will. I think yeah. I will. That's a great point, especially yeah. because I gave so many people free content on the podcast. That's yeah. right. And yeah. you know, it's just I. The thing is, you know, with us <laughs> sex workers, we're always up against it. <laughs> like, what about wait, we're uh, always up against? Wait, the let's, man dis- coming let's discuss down. this new price point. Yeah, I yeah. Forty. Okay. Forty sounds about right. I think that's good. That, that means up. that means it's not just. Like to, some people won't be just a joke. They'll be they actually want it. You know what I mean? Of course they so. want it. Of course. So. And you also put a lot of thought and care into these videos because yeah. I've seen some other cameos that are just lazy. Like, hey, what's They're up? In their car. I mean, yeah. we could do that if that's your kink, but no. But this is like this is my really... new screensaver right here. <laughs> <laughs> you really put a lot of energy and thought into your videos, so yeah. I do feel like forty dollars is definitely worth it, especially because they get a cut. Like, and because here's the thing, like I said. The man is constantly coming down on us sex workers, and they're trying to <laughs> shut us down at every angle. You know, our Twitters, our our Instagrams. <laughs> I can feel the heat coming from uh, Cameo. Yeah, and I just think I need to like uh, get as much content out there and get as much as I can from it. Let me ask you something. I'm switching subjects. <laughs> this is our career. I'm really proud of you, and <laughs> I hope too. you make a lot of money. Doing Thank this. you. Uh, what's up with your passport? Uh, seven more days, dog. I was trying to get the message out to you. Oh, really? Yeah, it's coming next week. They told you? Yeah. No, yeah. I mean, like, I did it, and they. this is the schedule time. I didn't do the expedited uh, thing at first, and that's why it's taking okay. so long. Oh, yeah, right. just pay for the expedited. Well, I did well, it. Didn't, so and no. But now you have all this week. extra fucking money. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if I was on Cameo sooner, I would have paid for the expedited. Uh, all right, all right, all right. Um, well, thanks, Josh. It's really great. Wow, I'm very proud. Really of you. Any work. other? Uh, do you have any date plugs? Are you going to be? Oh, anywhere? I would love to plug uh, the fact that I'm going to be in Seattle on September 5th at Chop Suey. The next day, I'm going to be in Tacoma at a place called Alma Mater. That's on the sixth, and then the eighth, I'm going to be in Portland at Mississippi Studios. If you're in Portland, please buy tickets. <laughs> and uh, tickets are where? Tickets are on my Twitter at j underscore Potter, or you can go to my Instagram at Josh underscore Potter. Uh, links are there, and they are a plenty of them. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Josh Potter will be with Josh me Potter. doing some shows. We're going to do Europe together. I know. It's like really so, and you're going to do Budapest, that. my homeland. We are. It's I a first show. Wait. I got to tell show. my homies there, my friends. Um, um, also, we've got some other staff updates. Do you want to get in since we're on the staff? Yeah. One of my, by the way, one of the, um, you know, we had that uh, episode a few weeks ago about how any poops once a month. Yeah. Uh, one doctor told me that he should just drink a bottle of whiskey. What? A doctor. He was like, tell him to chug a bottle of whiskey. That'll clean him out. Ew. And I was like, you're a doctor? <laughs> he was like, yeah. Wow. So, but, okay. um, but I think Dr. Drew was like, yeah, it's not that big of a it's deal. It's not that big of a deal. Yeah. So you're good, Any. Now, yeah. any uh, eats an entire loaf of bread in one sitting. We found that out while you were taking your disaster dump. A loaf of bread? Yeah. He eats a loaf of bread in one sitting, like Wonder Bread. What's or... up with the carb god? That's awesome. Yeah. Sue Woo, brother. That's nice. Sue. <laughs> <laughs> Sue Woo. Uh. Um, so anyway, you were taking a horrendous shit here uh, in the office before we recorded. Amen. And Nadav told us that he had an accident this weekend. And we, we, we didn't want to yeah. hear it because I wanted to hear it on, on the show. So Tell what happened? Tell me what happened. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I just started switching over to keto mm-hmm. and i forgot that that kind of rearranges your your whole insides for a while yeah. Yeah. Until, until you transition over to it uh-huh. uh so you know i've been having diarrhea pretty much for the last couple of days <laughs> uh-huh. and uh in hollywood there was something called like uh uh cyclavia or something where they shut down hollywood boulevard you could ride your bike down it fuck yeah. them sorry it's I pretty guess- neat I hate when cool. they don't shut down any part of Los Angeles for the marathon, yeah, for the bike bicyclists, I mean, for children. What are you doing? No, yeah, if you're in a car, it fucking sucks. Yeah. But if you got a bike. Yeah. It's, yeah. yeah. Go take it's it to the right. beach with all the other assholes. Why are you um, doing it in the streets of yeah. L.A.? Uh, anyway, go ahead. So, uh, so I was, you know, me and my buddy, like we got, uh, we got like one of those scooters. I was on one of those little motorbikes that you sit on <laughs> and uh, we're driving. And, uh, and then all of a sudden, like I have a cough. And the pressure in my stomach uh, just made me brown in my pants. And you're out on... I am in public. I'm away from my house. You're on a scooter? I have shit myself away from a clean uh, pair of boxers. And are you... Is it like a little squirt or are you like a lot came out? Enough came out where (laughs) my friend asked me what's wrong because my eyes were just completely open. He's like, are you okay? And it took me like 
three or four seconds to actually respond. I was like, can I lie about this? Right. Uh, and I couldn't. I and, couldn't because it was so uncomfortable. And you go, I just shit myself. I was like, I just shit myself. <laughs> I need to I need to go home. I just shit myself. And he's like, <sighs> okay. And so uh, at first, like when I coughed, I was standing up. Like we were stopped. Right. Um, and so as I start <laughs> uh, getting towards the scooter, I'm like, oh, no, I'm going to need to sit in this. <gasps> Wait, uh, sit in what? He's in sitting on a sco scooter. Like, like if I uh, didn't need to sit down, I could have probably at least wait, saved my pants. Hold on, hold on. What scooter is this? This yeah, is what the kids. Wheels? No, no, but wheels. I'm saying like a. I've seen those scooters that people are like renting. She's talking, talking about like birds, but right? But you're standing. You're no, 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 standing no. That's a scooter. Them. The thing I was on was like a motorbike. It's called wheels. Where oh, it's pretty much like a little wow. like thing that you're like a small motorbike. So you had to sit so down and sit on it. mush it into your yeah. butt. Yeah. Yeah. And Fun. so I, I mean, and is it a rent, like a rent thing? Yeah. yeah. Okay. It's something that you can unlock with your phone. And I mean, luckily I was only like three or four. But you're riding it solo, right? Right. Okay. And you yeah. have to sit. You can't stand. How uh, close are you to your place? You can stand. How far away from your place are you? Uh, probably like half a mile. Like I'm a okay, couple okay, blocks okay. away. Like I'm close enough. Like I was probably like three or four <laughs> minutes like scooter right away. And you're wearing uh, jeans, shorts? I'm wearing jeans. Uh, okay. I'm wearing and jeans. boxers? And or boxers, and, yeah. so, and do you feel it running down your legs? <laughs> it's not running down my legs, but I do just feel myself sitting in it. Oh. Uh, yeah, and it's diarrhea. There's potholes and stuff. Well, yeah, I'm uh. transitioning to keto. Nothing's working right now. Uh. So, uh, and then do you smell it? Uh, I don't smell it. <laughs> like it was enough. It was enough came out to oh. not smell, but uh. not enough to uh, uh, not ruin my pants. So okay, so you're half a mile from home, and you're sitting in your own caca. Yeah, and <laughs> and I'm there, by the way, I am. Laughing hysterically the entire like ride home. I I can't believe I shit myself. Plus I have to sit in it. Like it's just terrible. Terrible. It's terrible. So you make it I home. I forgot this part of keto. So you get you get home and do you have stairs? Do you have to walk upstairs? Well, wait a minute. First of all, wait, 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 back up a second. Yeah. So you do you leave the the wheels right outside your place? Right outside my place. And do you look at it and is it is it like is it messy? It, there is a spot. Why? There's Wait. a really? spot on the seat. How? I don't understand how, yeah. Because it's squirt. You know, there's just a lot of liquid leaving my body right now. Oh, so it seeped through your pants. So it seeped through my pants oh. and onto the seat. <laughs> and I decided to take a picture for it <laughs> for the show. All right, take it off. Yeah. <laughs> that's not even that bad. I know, but it's I just, just like liquid I know, brown. Just looked, I know, but it's just. But now when anybody now rents those is. disgusting well, wheels, look, I, I'm gonna... not a complete, you know, savage. Like I, I have wipes in my apartment, so I went up first, changed my pants, uh, just completely threw it out, and then. Um, <laughs> Smart, by the way. Respect. Yeah, you don't hold on. Respect. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. even if you throw it in the laundry, it's like it's, okay, now you have shit rolling around in your laundry. No, machine. yeah, it's you can't. gross. Yeah, it's a page one rewrite, so. <laughs> uh, I took a picture and uh, and then I went back downstairs with a disinfectant wipe and I wiped the seat down. Oh, you're nice. And it's disgusting. Where did you throw the dirty pants? Oh, then? straight in the dumpster. In the dumpster. Yeah. And then how did you clean off? Did you get jump in the shower? Yeah. 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 That's uh, that's like I jumped in the shower and then it was just like in my bathroom the entire. Day. I just felt disgusting for the rest of the day. Yeah. 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 And did you feel like you could get? Yeah. The smells like still there. Did it smell really bad? Uh, it didn't smell too terrible. It didn't smell too terrible, but I mean, it's been a rough year for me in terms of this kind of stuff. So instead of what stuff, like shitting yourself, shitting more? myself, yeah. you've been doing it a lot. Well, I mean, uh, the guys, <laughs> the guys in the room know this. <laughs> uh, I didn't tell you this, but I shit myself in the first episode of Two Bears One Cave. You did? What? Yeah. <laughs> what do you mean? So, and I feel like I keep on coming up with excuses, like, oh, I was transitioning to keto or whatever, but like, I was sick. Like, I was recovering from being sick. I when did we start that? It was a couple months ago. Yeah. Oh my God. Um, but I remember, I mean, you could pretty much pinpoint <laughs> when I did it. Cause I am <laughs> laughing my ass off the entire time. And then somewhere between minutes 17 <gasps> and 20, I get quiet for a couple minutes. And I was actually in this control room, like <gasps> trying to see if I could smell it. And Annie was like, is everything okay, dude? <laughs> and I'm like, yep, everything's fine. Let's just keep working. And uh, yeah, I shit myself in that in the beginning of that first episode. Oh. And you sat through the, for the whole episode. Yeah, and I don't know if you remember, but then we soundproofed this control room. So I pretty much did manual labor for the rest of the day after that. How did you get through that day? Luckily, I mean, it, that one was a really, <laughs> that one was a really small squirt. So I was able to push through it. Okay. But wow. yeah, it was foul. Wow. It's just been a rough year. You know man. what you need? Yeah. You know what you need? Um, <laughs> We have a bag that you travel with when you have a baby. 
Yeah, yeah. yeah I need an emergency. Of the baby yeah. bag. Yeah. yeah, that's right. Where you have emergency change bag. and you like extra shorts, wipes. Yeah. wipes. Yeah. I'm serious. Hand sanitizer and maybe a, a die dye too. You know, <laughs> better safe than better to have it and not need it than yeah. not have That's it. true. You need a diaper bag <laughs> here at the at the at the studio with a change of pants, a change of shorts. I do. Yeah. A yep. change. Yeah, and wipes. Yeah, we're gonna bring you your die dye bag. Yeah, yeah, it's been rough. <laughs> I might get you a die dye bag, <laughs> dude. I'll I'll wear one. What's going? What a crew we have. What is that? <laughs> we have the foot fetish sex worker. We have shit myself, and then we have I only shit once a week. Yeah, yeah, that's quite. And then we quite. got and we got Chris in the other room, fucking making non at home. Yeah, curry. Right? Yeah, hippie guy. Hippie guy. Yeah, this is unbelievable. You guys are really something else. Unreal. And then there's you with your racist... Uh, uh, Me? Yeah. What do you mean? We were looking at a house yesterday. Oh, yeah. And uh, I fell in love with the Spanish Dazzler. I'm a huge fan of the Spanish style. We both love it. Yeah. And so we've been looking at Spanish style We've been homes. trying to find a, that for a while. A long time, it's many like years. A big, a big goal to, like, to get a Spanish years style Years we've been looking. Yeah, this is a dream of ours. And so there, one came up in the neighborhood and I see it first when you're in Canada and I fall in love with it because everything in it is either imported from Spain or Mexico. Mm -hmm. That's how devoted they were to the Spanish. Every, every D I mean, the doors were like, uh, it, what is it? What did you call the little Incas? Atahualpa. It's a reenactment of yeah. Atahualpa <laughs> over. I love it. And I'm lo and there's crucifixes everywhere and San, and the San tile Maria, everywhere. The, the tile, every Spanish tile. I freaking, I, it smells and like a Hacienda. Maria paintings everywhere. I love it. Yeah. And it's so, yeah. it feels like I'm in Guanajuato in a Hacienda and there's fireworks going off and there's cowboys drunk shooting their guns in the air. I love uh, it. I freaking love I it. I walked into this place. And I, so, so I take you back yesterday after you arrived. Right away I go, this is some serious <laughs> spick shit here. <laughs> and the lady was no, like, No, he oh. says it out loud. This is some serious spick shit. <laughs> and I go, I go, it's really dialed up the spick stuff. And then uh, the realtor was like, oh. And then... <laughs> Christina, Christina goes, he's Latin. <laughs> and she's like, what? He's, she's like, his mom's from Peru. <laughs> so he's used to th these words. <laughs> well, because I, I... I was like, I feel like we're at my uncle's house in Paracas. <laughs> it's like... I love it. I mean, it was... It was... It was rad. too authentic. It's too, it was a tad. Like the living room looks like an adobe yeah. hut cave and the, and the doors have suns in them i love that but i, I love like, it i want to feel like i'm in, in mexico you know I like, yeah no i, I like I those latin flavors i was like i want the aesthetic but dial back the spec shit it's a little <laughs> too much you know i was like i feel like i'm in catholic school in ayacucho right now i loved it yeah lots of marias everywhere too. everywhere it was too Jesus, much jesus is and the was, tile work. I was feeling traumatized in there, you know. I know. Because yeah. you're very, your mother was very Catholic. Yeah, and I used to yeah. spend time at, you know. I know. In Peru going to school and doing spick shit all day. It's like, <laughs> it's it's too much. Yeah. Well, yeah. we have to find something in between, definitely, right? Yeah, I mean, no, I mean, look, it's not the worst thing. It's a, it's a nice house, but it was just like, it's, it's, it's too much. Man. Too spicky. It's did you tell spicky. our agent that dial back on the spicky? I did. I said I like the spick aesthetic, but I don't want like to to move into some fucking yeah. You know what I mean? She's German, so like, we make uh, fun of her being Francisco Pizarro's house. <laughs> like know. just chill I out a little bit. I like I like Latin flavors. Sue me. I'm very multicultural. I'm very woke. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Is that what the kids are saying? Uh, I'm inclusive. <laughs> okay. Gene, I'll do my dates. Of course. Well, first off, I want to thank everybody who's listened to Where My Mom's At so far. You know what's interesting, Tom? A lot of guys like Where My Mom's At. <laughs> it's yeah. so bizarre. Yeah. If you're a dude listening to this show, you're interested in whatever, Where My Mom's At, tell your ladies in your life, tell your girlfriends, your wives, your sisters, listen to my show. It drops every Monday at noon on the YouTubes, on the iTunes. I had Dr. Drew on. Uh, I'm going to have Katie Morton on, who's a famous uh, YouTube psychologist. Great. And I want you to come on eventually. I'll come, come on. on. That'd be yeah. fun. 
Okay, dates. Christina P. Online, September 5th, <coughs> Milwaukee. September 6th, Chicago, Illinois. September 7th, Boston, um, massive, huge tits. That's okay. great, yes. And Nardsville, t- Tennessee, October 3rd through 5th. I've just added Sperm Vine, Sperm Vine, California. That's Irvine, October 17th, November 22nd, Meat Rattle, Washington. And then November 23rd, Portland, Oregon. Tickets at Christina P. Online. I'm also doing September 22nd at uh, uh, Vegas <coughs> with Billy Eilish. That's crazy. In a music festival. I know Agent Jeans was like, I heard you like Billy Eilish. Mind blown. So I freaking do. Um, all right. Uh, if you're going to see the Take It Down tour, my next stop is Memphis, Tennessee. Uh, that Memphis. is September 10th. Next day, uh, just very few tickets left in Knoxville. Day after that, same very few tickets left the 12th in Greenville. Uh, there are tickets available to the Late Show in Durham, North Carolina. That's at the uh, Durham Performing Arts Center. The early show is sold out. Tickets available September 14th for the Late Show. Then um, later in the month, I do San Jose. Um, very few tickets left there in Oakland. Los Angeles, the 20th and 21st. Whoop, There's whoop. just about 100 or so tickets left on the 20th. And Ooh, then can I just, Santa Barbara. Can I just interject here? You're doing LA, the Orpheum, yes. which is fucking amazing. I'm just so proud of you. Oh, thanks, This Gene. is my hometown. I'm just proud of you. Well, thank you. I just love I'm excited. It. Um, I'm excited for you. That's huge. Uh, September 22nd, Santa Barbara, then El Paso, Tucson, Phoenix, and in Denver... We added a show the 28th at the Belco. The early show sold out. Crazy. So go to the late show. Um, what else has been added? New York. I'm doing Kingston, New York. I'm doing New York, New York. I'm doing the Beacon Theater on November 7th. Um, ben Salem, I was told to say it correctly, uh, November 8th. And what else? I have a show that we added in Charlotte, November 13th. The special I'm taping is November 16th. It's all sold out, so we added a show the next day in Austin on November 17th. Um, Of course, we're doing Hawaii December 28th and 29th. And I mentioned earlier that we added a show in Windsor, Ontario Ontario on uh, December 8th. All those tickets are at TomSegura.com. Thanks to everybody for coming out to the shows for getting tickets. Really appreciate you. All right. Um, we should take a quick break and we'll be back with our guest. Our next guest is handsome. He's brilliant. He's hilarious. He'll tell you that's just not enough. He <laughs> it has a new special out and a lot going on. First time here. It's amazing to have him. Anthony Justinick, thank Hello. you for coming. That's uh, it's just not enough. I know. I know. I know. <laughs> I know. But, you know, I was thinking, I don't know if this is correct or not. That's why I've never claimed it without verifying. But I feel like we started together. But I'm like, oh, but I don't know if actually we started together. Like, we used to do shows together. We used to be on the same show. The three of us would be on shows like, dude, like 16 years ago here in L.A. Well, how long have you been doing it? Uh, since 02. Okay. Yeah. Why I think I started in like... Start? I'm like, in October, it'll be 17 years for me, or maybe 18 years. Yeah, so I'm 17, uh, almost 18. See, I think of us as being in the same class. Yeah. Uh, the same with Christina. Christina and I were friends under false, uh, like under a false premise. Were we? Because I thought, I don't know why I thought this, but I thought forever that you were from Pittsburgh. So <laughs> I was like right, extra totally nice that. to you. <laughs> and then like, because I was like, oh, my friend from Pittsburgh, you know, I've got to be like, hey, what's up? Oh, Pajitsky. There's a bunch a of, of right? Polacks I think there. I confused you with someone else oh, at the same time funny. who started. And then we were like talking one night in the comedy store parking lot. And you were like, where are you from? And I gave you this look like, what are you talking about? And yeah, you were like confused. Yeah. And you're like, I-, I thought we were both from Pittsburgh. You're like, I oh, know I'm from here. And I was like, oh. <laughs> you know. like, we're not even friends anymore. I've been nice for no for reason. For no reason whatsoever. <laughs> yeah. I remember like, because when you do the, like those shows, I remember like, you know, not every show, but we would, we were on like, you know, a few probably bringer shows and then like small randomly book shows, meaning like not at... The clubs, not at the yeah. improv, not at, not at the comedy yeah, yeah. store. And I remember in those days, like, I didn't know you really well, but like, it was clear 
in those early days that like you were one of the good. Co- so if I saw you on the sh- on the show, I'd be like, oh, was, like Anthony's here. He's one of the the good ones. Yeah, I felt the same way about you. That it was like we didn't know each other well, but there was a respect. It was yeah, like okay, we're in the time. same like. That's true. I did. Aren't you guys just French of, beards already? Oh, oh maybe we will. But I I, I definitely was like. Um, because they're, you know, on those shows, there would be like, you'd be like, this person's fucking awful. Uh, <laughs> I mean, you would, right? And oh, you're absolutely. Like, yeah. And then like Anthony would go up there and you always had, I mean, just like, I, I remember from those <laughs> days, it has to have been, um, you guys are the worst people. What? This is so funny to me. The two of you are known for being highly unlikable and watching the two of you have conversations. It's like, dude. none of the people we're throwing under the bus do comedy anymore. It's true. You know I mean? <laughs> They're like, all they gone. gone. They're all done. You need yeah. to come hang out with us more. Cause I feel like you two are soulmates. You need I to love be better friends. You need to come over. Um, I remember the motorcycle joke from back right because it had to be it's, it's that old right that's it's, one of the first jokes yeah one that's that's jokes. one that like i would remember i would remember sitting with sickler and we'd be like oh it's coming right here what's the motorcycle would, joke I this remember. joke's so good um when i finished high school uh i want to take all my graduation money and buy myself a motorcycle my mom said no see she had a brother who died in a horrible motorcycle accident when he was 18 and i could just have his motorcycle <laughs> <laughs> Great. I don't yeah. remember any like when I do like when I finish an hour or like I finish a tour or whatever uh, I forget all the material so I can do the new stuff yeah. but I remember that joke yeah. word for word yeah. well that was like great. that was like I mean for me looking back on that time like you know 16 some years ago that was to me like one of your signature jokes of that era right I mean I would see you do oh, 15 absolutely. minute sets so that's you know that's what we would do yeah but um isn't that yeah. amazing though? I'm sorry. but I also thought it made the most sense like because you you wrote such like precise like you, you know it was like economy of words oh, completely. Oh yes, he's that, the writer. Like when you split, you left to New York. And I'm like, where'd you go? They're like, oh, he's writing on uh, one of the late night shows. I was like, oh, that makes perfect fucking sense. Like that, that dude. That's why I started doing stand up was yeah. to get a monologue writing job. Hilarious. And by the time I finally got it, I was like, what am I doing? Yeah, like, that's the irony of it. Is yeah. like, what are you doing? And then they basically, from what I've heard, never used your jokes. Like your jokes were always no. like, yeah. They knew I was funny. Like, I thought I was going to get fired every 13 weeks as you can fire a writer. Uh-huh. So I'm like, I'm not getting anything on. Like, Jimmy would be like, I can't say this joke. <laughs> but I was the funny guy in the room. Like, it was right. all Harvard people. And then, like, Morgan Murphy and me were like, the two comedians. So we were the funniest ones in the room, but our stuff never got on. That's hilarious. But they were, when I finally quit, they were like, we would have never fired you. Like, we loved you. And really? And you were part of the family. Yeah. And I, I waited a year to quit because I, I knew immediately this was a mistake. Mm-hmm. And uh, but I felt like if I quit before a year, people it would be on my resume as like a red mark. People would be like, "What? Why did you quit?" And right. Like, and then when I finally left, I was like, "No one ever would have asked me anything." Now, were no. you liter- Did you literally get nothing on? Like nothing? <sighs> I mean, maybe because I had to write. Like in the beginning, it was just me and one other guy. Now that staff is like twelve people. Right. And we didn't know any better. It was our first job. So we're like, we are we bad at this? Mm-hmm. So we were freaking out writing like 100 jokes a day, 75 jokes a day. And you never knew what Jimmy Fallon was going to pick. Mm-hmm. You know, you never knew what his mood was going to be. One day he loved this type of joke. The next day he hated it. Uh, so I wrote a lot and I would get things on, but nothing I was ever proud of. Mm-hmm. Oh, right. Like, it's like one, the joke. You're like, you're, that's the fifth best joke I wrote today. Like, that's the one that gets Oh, on. like, like the 10th, like this is yeah. a hack joke. I would never tell this. And he would be like, this is great. We'll use this. <laughs> um, always a, and didn't it part, yeah. ta- part, cause I, oh, you have to speak into the mic. See the oh. blue band's oh, telling well, you. Just, just tilt it a little just bit. Just tilt Sorry. it up. Yeah. Cause I wrote for Chelsea lately for a minute and a half mm-hmm. too. And um, I remember every time she would say something that I had written, a piece inside of me died. Where I was like, oh, this is my fucking... But wasn't it also that you said, like, you hated... My ego can take you, it. Like, someone else is is saying yours, that's, right? That's my thought, and that's my... Per- you know, you try to write for someone else's voice, but ultimately it's you, and you go, I should be the fucking... I want to yeah. be the host, I, or I want to be the star here, and, and my ego just could not take it. Well, when you're a comedy writer, you take the host's voice, and you make it your own. When you're a comedian, you use your own voice and you hope the host likes it, mm-hmm. you know? So I would write these jokes where they were just like, Jimmy has to be likable to be a host. <laughs> like my whole thing is like you. not being likable. Yeah. I'm going to make you laugh anyway. Yeah. Like we can't do this. I remember like the, a couple of weeks in, I was like, I'm going to shape the voice of this show. And I write this joke and it was like, <laughs> so arrogant. it was the day. Well, it's like, I'm one of the first writers they yeah. hired. It was like, that's the, that's why I wanted to be on the show. Yeah. I thought about like the romantic days of like Conan first starting. And it was like Louis CK and like Robert Smigel and these guys. Like I wanted to be like that. And there was none of that. 
And but part of it was the the show was a success from the beginning that we didn't have to, you know. But I remember writing a joke. It was like Shakespeare's birthday. Mm -hmm. And the joke was like something like on this day in like 16 whatever Shakespeare was born. And on this day in 16 whatever Shakespeare died. Like I mean he died on his birthday. And everyone's like kind of like, "Ooh." And he's like he's like I don't care what anybody says. That guy was a great writer. <laughs> and like it got like the writers in the room to laugh, mm -hmm. yeah. but Jimmy told it and it like bombed. Oh. And then the, and they still aired it. They didn't cut it out and the next day they had a meeting where they were like no more jokes like that. Like uh, we're, we're not going to do yeah. any like weird nothing like, too yeah. clever. Nothing yeah. 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 It's like we're going to be like down the middle like right. these are these are the jokes. That's the death like, of you though. Yeah. Right away. I was like that's that's it. There's nothing fun to be had. No. Yet. That's your whole thing and it's so fascinating because you know, the assumption is that likability is key to being a stand-up comedian. You got to win over a room full of strangers. So how did you come, how did you figure out that being unlikable was actually the way to be? Were you always a piece of shit? I didn't have a choice. It was like, I walked on stage, imagine me at 23, you know what I mean? Walking on the stage with a bunch of other, like a lineup full of white guys who looked like uglier versions of me. Right. And then I get up there and people hated me right away that I was like, this is interesting. <laughs> let's lean into this. If the, let's ah. see if I can make the joke so good that you can hate me and you still have to laugh at it. And then I just started following. Like I would say like, I'm the greatest and the crowd would <laughs> laugh. And I was like, yeah. okay, like, let me follow this. Like, this is interesting. Let me, let my ego get involved. I feel like, no, like I, knowing <laughs> that you so were coming crazy. on, I was like, oh man, you know what? I, Cause I think, I think you have the same instinct I do when, when a crowd does turn on you, like historically, then I'm like, I'm, I'm definitely going to be meaner now. Like, I, <laughs> but like, so I was like, I would love to see like the, your sets that have gone the, the worst <laughs> would be to me, not amusing in the sense of like, oh, you're seeing someone bomb. I mean, like, I would just love to see you lean in mean <laughs> on a crowd that doesn't like you. I mean, normally, like I had saves pretty early on, you know, like uh -huh. if a crowd was like, just didn't laugh, I'd go, oh, I'm sorry. I thought you guys were cool. <laughs> and they would laugh at that and then I'd be back to like I found out that like if you didn't just like apologize then you were cool yeah but there was one show one of the worst <laughs> show I ever had to do uh, I was in um, I was at the Columbus Funny Bone uh -huh. and it, the weekend went so badly and I had such a bad time with the manager that I was like I'll never do a Funny Bone again like I will never do a Funny Bone again and I haven't really and yes wow uh, I was just so mad at the at the manager I've never been treated that way uh, and I had to do these, I did all these shows. They were all sold out. And then it was mother's day on Sunday. And I was like, guys, you don't want me on mother's day. And they like fly out the room. And I was like, call every single person who bought a ticket and tell them who I am and explain it to them. Right. And they were like, we got it. We called everybody. Everyone's there cool. was down. And then I went up <laughs> and I just, I mean, it was just a train wreck from start right to finish. Away, they're like, and it was, in a, it was also in a way that I was like, you're right. <laughs> like, yeah. you should never have come here to see me on Mother's Day. Yeah. Like, this yeah. is the worst show. Sometimes I'm like, this is a bad crowd. I'm like, you guys are fine. The problem is me. Yeah. And I have yeah. no plan B. Yeah. I'm not going go yeah. to go into the crowd and talk to your mom. Mm -mm. You're going to hear more of these jokes. <laughs> yeah. And they hated it. Well, that's the thing is that I, I've always, um, I, I told somebody, I was, like, I was like, you know, the difference between an entertainer and a comedian is like the entertainer goes, I just want everybody to have a good time. And as a comedian, like the way that I feel is like I'm doing, I'm bringing what I do up there. And like, if it, if you don't like it, I'm not switching. I'm not going to be like, I'm a dance over here to make everybody have a good, I mean, I'm, I'm not in that business. Mm -hmm. I'm in the stand up <laughs> business and this is what you get. You get this show. So if you don't know who you came to see, like what you're talking about, that's fucking your problem now. You know, mm -hmm. well, you came to see a movie. And yeah. you're yeah. gonna see the movie. Yeah, like, see I'm not the gonna, movie. I'm exactly. not gonna change the movie mm -hmm. no. because somebody's not having a good because you brought too many kids. Yeah, you right. know, like it's a rated R movie. Well, yeah. and there's the internet. You can Google who the fuck you're gonna see that night. Yeah, you don't just show up to a movie and go, "What's playing?" I don't care anything. <laughs> no, you no. you no. pick the movie. Well, that's the problem though. Stupid. Like, so many of those like Funny Bones and some of the, they're in you know these malls where there's there are people yeah. like, "What's this?" Oh, let's go in here. Yeah. And you're like, I mean, you're not going to even Google the band you're about to go watch. <laughs> I mm -hmm. know. See if it's the genre of music you like. No. Yeah. <laughs> just and then they're like, I don't like this. Well, you should have fucking looked it up. You know, well, that's crazy. I don't like country. Well, you're at a country concert. Okay. Yeah. 
That's, that's not my fault. No, yeah. and it's so funny because we've known Anthony forever. And I remember a young 20, early 20 something Anthony Jesselneck. And you were so sweet. You've always been the sweetest person. I'm, I'm sure people are, I mean, are they surprised when they meet you? And the, uh, do you hear that Some a lot? Is what I'm saying. They're like, like, I expect you to be a fucking dick. Yeah. Yeah, and I think I'm not even that nice. I'm just not as mean as you think I'm going to be. <laughs> right. You know, like that no. guy's like such a monster. You no, were that's a true. sweet 23-year-old, I, I remember. I you. found that so many comics who acted sweet on stage were dicks off stage. Yes. Totally. That I was like, you know yes. what? Like, let me go the other way. And 100%. the PG acts Oh, would be fuck demons. them the most. Yeah. yeah. Big yeah. liars. I always say I don't trust male comedians who don't talk about their dicks yeah. or anything dark or weird. Yeah. They look at Cosby. He was the biggest monster of them all. And well, you can <laughs> say the bad yeah. words. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. He's not okay. cursing. Go yeah. fuck yourself. Yeah. Not cursing. No, I know. It's so true. weird. And yeah, the nicest comics usually have like the most yeah. fucked up material. You mm-hmm. see that across the board. Because you get it out there. Yeah. So that it's not in you. Yeah. yeah. Wow. It's true. So were you always, no, so wait, so a young Anthony Jeselnik, did you always have confidence? Were you? I had some confidence, you know, I knew I read a lot and so I, I felt like I was smart. Uh, Are you a I lit major? Than people. That right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I wanted to be uh, like a novelist. Are you an Ivy League guy too? No, I went to Tulane. Uh, I, was, I was like, I was like, in honors classes. New Orleans, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's like a party school. Yeah. They would wasted? call it the Harvard of the South, but there's like eight Harvards of the South. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, but I, uh, I was, I was in like honors classes, but I was the class clown in honors classes. So, so I was smart. like underachieving. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I was smart. Yeah. I guess, but not like a genius. Yeah. Not like now. No, 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 no. Not like yeah. now, of course. <laughs> um, what was your, what were your parents like? What'd you grow up like? Uh, I was the oldest of five kids in what? Pittsburgh. What? Five? Yeah. I did not know mm-hmm. this. Five kids in seven years, me, three girls, and a brother. And so, like, the family was just, like, my dad worked. My mom was just running us around to different activities. And uh, What do your siblings think of, like, you know, who you are now? Are they like, they're very proud of me. Mm-hmm. I think they can get a little annoyed that my parents or my mom is, like, obsessed with me. No. <laughs> like it's like did you hear what anthony did listen to this anthony's podcast like really? watch anthony's special again and then like we get it like yeah. we're fans but so you're like, the favorite clearly i went from the black sheep to the golden child Ooh. because of success yes yeah a fan. success just trumps everything they would even be embarrassed of me like my material and stuff until like neighbors started knocking on the door to be like your son was great last night you know, then they were cool, but they were like, he's actually a nice kid. And they were like, no, 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 we get it. Yeah. Like, he's a performer. Yeah, we're not fucking morons. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. it's, it's good. It out. But yeah. they were, they were embarrassed until I, like, they had something to point to. Like, early on, I was doing well. Like, I would be on Kimmel. You know, I would get, like, I would be on Conan or on Premium Blend. Yeah. My parents didn't know how to tell people that. Mm. They didn't know what that was. So they just told everyone that I wrote for Jay Leno. <laughs> <laughs> that was their only that was like showbiz to them <laughs> which would be the last job exactly. you could probably keep so I would come home and I'd be like all proud of myself like maybe they saw me on Kimmel and they'd be like so your parents tell us you're uh, writing for Leno and I'd be like no and they'd be like oh <laughs> oh and I'd be like but and they'd be like yeah 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 no whatever your dad lied to me yeah and my dad told somebody I was on SNL one time and I was like what <laughs> he's like well you were on a thing I was like you you said Saturday Night Live and he was like I don't remember I'm like that's what they said, so that's what you said. Yeah, <laughs> like he just—he was just like, "Well, I remember it was TV." I was like, "Yeah, it's, it's a distinction, though, right?" Like, <laughs> yeah, like TV to them, like SNL was TV. It's like they just don't. Yeah, know. they're just like he's a comedy show on TV. I think it was SNL. I'm like, mm-hmm. okay, that's cool. Um, he's a he uh, he. I don't know if you get this from your parents. My dad called me. He was like, "I was at Rite Aid and uh, <laughs> the pharmacy. The lady's your biggest fan." And I was like, "Oh, that's cool." So uh, when you're here, if you want to go say hi and i was like i don't want to do that he was like oh i I thought you would i go why do you think that i would want to go to ride (laughs) to meet the lady and he's like she's a big fan i'm like i I appreciate it but like i don't want to go to ride aid to meet the pharmacy lady to be like hey i heard you like me what's embarrassing like how presumptuous of you to be like here i am you want to take a picture? I don't have any meds to pick up (laughs) but my parents used to give out my email address no i was like you got to stop you got to stop it, guys. Like, but and they're a fan. They they're say. nice. Oh, it's nice. And I'm like, yeah, I've got a lot of fans, <laughs> uh, but don't give out my email address. That's like, that's. Oh, God. I had to train oh, dude. One of my dad's friends, <laughs> friend is a lawyer, funny guy. <laughs> so he's been writing his some material. And oh, I'm like, boy. and he's like, I thought you might uh, read it for him. Give him your thoughts. And I'm like, nope. <laughs> 
<laughs> read a, your lawyer friend's like written monologues and then give him feedback. Oh yeah, I thought God, that that would be death. nice because he death. likes to write. It's and like when I first dude. started, like I just done, done like some bringer shows, some open mics. My parents were like, one of your like second cousins contributes jokes to Craig Kilborn on like his like late late show. Uh, would you want to like email him and talk to him? And I was like, yeah, I guess, you know, I'll try that. And so I like sent him the transcript of like my first ever stand up set. And then he like looked at it and was like, okay, like, and it was like, of course it was terrible. But now I wonder what that guy's thinking. Like this, yeah. this nice. fucking guy is yeah. now like, yeah, so like I have a reading that. That's yeah. hilarious. How do many? You get, do you get email jokes? Do you get email jokes? Yeah. I get like on my website. Hey man, big oh, fan. Like, oh, you have, a, you have an email address on your website? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they'll go. A uh, big fan. I was thinking about this and thought you could you could do something with this. Like, yeah, I could press delete on this shit. <laughs> and they, they like, they're. I'm like, you just think I'm gonna like, say your. Then sometimes they'll do it for a specific. I saw you're coming to Kansas City. It'd be great if you re referred to you know the place over on 23rd Street. And I'm like, uh huh. I found <laughs> that like no comics can give me advice, no matter how like amazing the comic is or how much I respect them. Yeah, I mean, I've had like like. Chris Rock has been like, try this, and it has not worked. Right. Jim Gaffigan's wow. like, try this, and I'm like, okay. Some people now, they're like, can I give you a piece of advice? And I'm like, no, you cannot. It just won't work. But I remember uh, Russell, uh, Russell Peters comes up to me, and I love Russell Peters. Yeah. But he comes up to me at the improv, and he's like, I thought of a joke that only you could do. Do you want to hear it? And I'm like, you're Russell Peters. Like, yeah. And he's like, hold on, I got to do the set. I'll be right back. Goes and does the set, comes back to me, and I'm waiting, and I'm just like, I wonder what this is going to be. And he goes, he's going through his phone for like five minutes and finally goes, something about make a wish kids. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> yeah. And I go, that's not a joke. Yeah. Like that's not a joke. Yeah. That's I like, not, I like the area you're in. Yeah. Yeah. It's a great subject. Yeah. I understand why you would say that, but so, being like, it's a joke only you could do. How many people don't get the joke with you? How much hate mail do you get? I don't really get much. And I've been kind of grandfathered in that if someone tries to attack me, like the comments are just like people like I've had to stop retweeting ironically. Yeah. You know, if someone did, like misses the point and tweets at me like angrily, then I, I and I would retweet it. My fans would just devastate them. Yeah, that it's like hundreds <laughs> of comments being like you're an idiot. Like like they'll, a lot of a big a big one I'll see is like you must be new here. You know, like yeah. that now. But either if you don't get it, you've got to keep your mouth shut because someone enough people do. Yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? And like the name is enough. It's got to feel good. Yeah. It feels great. Yeah. It's like what I've been. You've been building Like it. before the Trump roast, uh, when I was just kind of like, I had put out an album, but I was like a comedian who was just touring. Pe most people were just showing up to see comedy and it was very, it was painful. It yeah. was tough to get through. You never knew if the show was going to be good or bad. And then once the Trump roast happened, everyone who bought a ticket knew what they were coming to see and were excited for it. Were you it on that? I don't remember the, everything. You did. Trump was my, like my big break. So that what, was like my first roast. What was it like now? I mean, you roasted the future president of the United States. What was like, did you have personal interaction with him? Shook his hand when I walked up there and when I walked off and, and he, he was like, thank you in a sincere way because I followed the situation mm -hmm. who were just bombed. Oh, so I remember badly. this. <gasps> and then oh, Jeff came up to God. kind of save him. Mm -hmm. And oh, and then the situation was like, Anthony Jeselnik, like, uh, who's this guy? And I remember, and then he like looked at the audience and then you took a drink. You're like, <laughs> yeah, I knew it was, I was like, reactions are going to be big on this one. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and then like, it was so much worse in person than on TV. What the, like oh. they had to take a 10 minute break. But he must have, because I imagine for these things that like, especially for a non comic, they pair you up with a writer and try to like, get, oh, they write your whole act for you to get you to do it. Like it's, it's 10 writers. And he just was like, I don't need it. He was like, he was brought in last minute. So they uh -huh. wrote the jokes last minute, but they really thought he can sell these. They were like, here's how you say these jokes. They didn't want him to bomb. He right. thought he yeah. could kill if you, but he had like an attitude. He didn't practice it. Went up there with sunglasses on. Oh boy. And like they gave him a little bit of grace in the beginning and then we're like, oh, he's not respecting this. Right. And turned on him. And I think in his life at that point, that's what he would do. They would pay for him to show up at a state fair and get booed for 10 minutes and then they give him a check for 10 grand yeah. and he walk off. Right. So like to his credit, he didn't run off the stage. He, he took, he took it. Yeah, he took and it. And I remember he walks over to us at the dais and we're all sitting together like in these bleacher kind of yes. situation yeah. and everyone's looking at the floor like we didn't know what to say to this guy and then he just I just see his feet come up and stop and I look up and he gives us two thumbs up and goes 
that was good, right? <laughs> like, he did not know. He didn't register. Uh, he didn't, yeah, he's like, that's just what it is for him. Right. And we're like, yeah, this man. That's what I do, man. That was fantastic. <laughs> like, you knocked it out of the park. <laughs> so, but, but your Trump interaction was brief and your yeah, handshake. I shook his hand yeah. and I was like, maybe he's not a bad guy. You know, because I'd heard mixed things from other people, you know, uh, horrible, not horrible. And he was funny at the roast. Like, when he yeah. did his rebuttal, like, he was legit funny. And then, like, the next day, he became like a birther. Like he was like, where's uh, the birth certificate? And I was like, that's the dumbest of the dumb. Oh like, yeah. I, like I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. Yeah. I remember, um, he, I think it was Ross. Yeah. Ross said, you know, was always nice, paid well. Like, cause he did like some privates for him and mm -hmm. did some of his casino stuff. And I think even rock said he was like, oh yeah. You know, he was always, um, who he was red, red tie, the suit, uh, you know, like you, you didn't have to love him, but it was, you know, anyways, just like no false pretense of anything with him mm -hmm. seemed like he was who he was yeah like a harmless guy he liked to talk about how rich he was yeah yeah still yeah. is yeah <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah he still is who he is kind of right yeah yeah, yeah. It's weird. I mean, he, I mean, we don't have to get into politics. I mean, I can't stand them, but uh, yeah. he was like a he was like a liberal. You know what I mean? He was like a Clinton person, yeah, forever. And then was like, oh, here's my way in. Yeah, you know, it here's was so my contrived. Like, it's like when you see comics go right wing. It's like, no, you were just bad at being a comic. Yeah, yeah. And you yeah, were like, yeah. these people are so starved for it that I'm going to start like acting like this. Yeah, <sighs> and uh, and you can see it. Like there's guys like Nick DiPaolo. You're like, Nick, you're like this. I love Nick DiPaolo. I disagree with his politics, but I, I can watch him and laugh and love it because it comes like... From a genuine from a real place. place. Yeah. He's not he's not pandering. The people who are pandering, I'm like, this is the worst comedy I've ever heard. Right, no. Or it goes the other way where you're super left wing yeah. and you're just pandering. It's like, I, somebody tweeted this once. It was like, stop supporting mediocre comedy because it backs up your beliefs, you know? It should be great comedy or like listen to a fucking TED talk or like hear a speech. Like well, it should, you should you mix start it to different. see it with a lot of the like super Stop liberal it. comics mm -hmm. that um, their show, like you can even watch it in a special, like this show is just applause breaks. It's Ugh. not, there's no laughs. Mm -hmm. well, and it's, it's like, you know what I mean? And everyone's like, yeah. fuck yeah, good Well, because they're preaching yeah. to people that are already converted. Yeah, exactly. So it's like, what's the big, rape is bad, am I right? And you're like, yeah, yeah everybody fucking, yeah, nobody's yeah. contesting that. Yeah, you know, gu guns, are real bad if you use them. You know. Know, like, fuck you. Yeah, like, no. we need to do something, people. Yeah. Am I right? Like, <laughs> yeah. Big applause. I remember yeah. doing, I remember, way back in the day, this friend of mine went down to Orange County and there was like an open mic, not an open mic, it was like a book show, but it was at a, like a rehab center. Mm -hmm. It's like all these sober people and they were like, you just kill because They're they the love everything. They're the best. Thing. Usually, and this was like not that night where we were just oh. dying. But every once in a while, you'd just be like, how about the troops? And they would go nuts. <laughs> so you'd like tell a joke and it would bomb and you'd be like, Kobe Bryant should rape the shit out of that girl, right? And they'd be like, yeah. <laughs> and you just like had like every button you could push in between jokes. Yeah. We did a couple of, what was that one out here? It was out, out in the valley. That. It's Yeah. Uh, the, it was, it was I a AA. Mick Betancourt. Yes. Mick Betancourt's thing. And man, like the first time I did it, I was like, fucking AA thing? I don't want to do, like I didn't know anything about it. I'm like, that sounds like, oh, can we, they're like, can you talk about it? And they go, you can talk about anything. Like <laughs> you, you can't push it far enough with them. I was like, really? <sighs> and you go in there and it was like epic. The, the show was um, amazing. And those people, I don't know, you know, they were like actively like entering sobriety, some of them. And this was like a huge release for them. It's one of the best shows I've ever had is doing those shows there used to be dude i don't know if you ever did it there was this a coffee house on sunset that i think dan bilek may have ran that's a, yeah yeah and it was yeah. like a midnight show yes and it was all like latino recovering addicts like playing <laughs> dominoes and drinking coffee yeah and everyone in there was sober except the owner was like a meth head uh. and he would like the first couple shows went well and it was like it was like you were scared of the audience so you was like fun to do you know you were like uh -huh. going to like get better and then at one point, like the, like the, uh, everyone's sober, except the owner would just walk up and down the aisles playing an acoustic guitar loudly, <laughs> yelling at everyone who hadn't ordered anything. And you're like on stage watching the owner like come towards you being like, what did you get? 
<laughs> but I'm like, I got to, I, I, it's midnight. I don't want a coffee. I'm sorry. Like, there's nothing you have here for me, but I'm performing. Uh, That's hilarious. Uh, such an awful. And Dan Bailey like, ran, didn't you run the Nickels? Remember? 12, 12, 12 Shiny Nickels? Yeah. 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 That was a fun show. That was good. Cool. I times. did it once and yeah. I was just like, if you're going to disrespect me with that, like once the light goes off, like everyone applauds. Like, I, oh. uh. I can't stand those. I love your standards <laughs> for like, I'm not, like, you're like, I'm never doing a funny bone again. And I didn't. Dude, I I did that. I did set list once. Mm -hmm. Like they'd be like, Paul Prevenz is emailing me, being like, "Come play," and I'm like, I'm, "I don't play. Like I don't play on stage. Like I'm there to like come and kill. Like yeah. playing has nothing to do with it." And then one night, I'm just at the. I go to see Todd Glass at the Improv, and they're doing that. And then I like the Sklar Brothers go up, but they do well. And they're like, "You should do it. Just go up, go ahead and, and do it." And I'm like, "Fine, I'll do set list." And I go on stage and immediately realize what a mistake it was mm -hmm. because they're telling me what to talk about. Right. Oh boy, and and I'm like, like do you don't either. tell me what to talk about ever. And like the lines are funny. You know, it was like the first one was like crazy crucifixion. Oh and you're supposed to, how does it work? You're supposed to start with that? Yeah. Like you're supposed to act as if it's like, don't just look at me like crazy crucifixion. Hmm. Like, like act as if you have a joke about it. Just pretend. And that makes me mad already. Yeah. yeah. yeah and then it's like, like don't either. give me a joke. No. We've done an interview with like the questions or jokes. Ugh. It's like, no, ask me a question <sighs> and let me be funny. Yeah. Don't try to ask me a joke question to show how clever you are. Cause then I can't do anything with that. That's true. Yeah. 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 Like let, well, it's like when you do press, you know, especially like when you do radio you go in, it's like, you can tell that the good radio host lets you be the comic mm -hmm. and you can, and then the ones that like resent that you're there, like, <laughs> mm -hmm. like right away, they're like, all right, you can be funny when we come back from the break and you're like, oh boy, okay. Like I can, you can too. And yeah. then, you know, it's, I feel like it, it's like the ones that are go like, I have like actual, I researched you for 15 seconds. So I actually have a few questions to ask. And those ones go great. I, sometimes I do it where I can tell they went through my IMDb page. Yeah. You know? Without totally. being like, so you were the first uh, comic to perform on Late Night with Jimmy Fallon. I'm like, oh, this is going to be yeah. terrible. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. horrible. Now, you're so methodical. You just said that a little bit. You come to kill. Every time I've seen you at the store, you're, you've got, to, if you're working out your new hour, you've got your notebook and you're, you're so efficient. What's your method? What do you do? Do you record everything? I record everything and never listen to it. Me too. Yeah. Me too. <laughs> like, unless I'm like, I've really riffed something crazy there yeah. that like, I've got to go back. Uh, I never listen to it, uh, but I record every set mostly so I can look and see how much time I have. Uh, like I have no concept of time. I might've been up there for 20 minutes or two minutes. I don't know. So I have to look at something. And, uh, I just really hated comics who wasted people's time. I, I hate agree. entertainment that wastes people's 100%, time. hundred percent. Like, I agree. Do, like let's be efficient and make everything count. I loved that aspect of it. And it is harder. It does take more time, but I really wanted to be that to Meaning be like develop newer, new material. Every time you go up, Hey, I have a new joke every night or like the motorcycle joke. I told, I remember going to Ireland for a festival and everyone being like, Hey man, that could be like a five minute long story. You could really stretch uh, that out. I was like, yeah. it's a perfect 30 second perfect joke. joke. Yeah. I'd rather a perfect 30 second joke and then come up with, you know, other 120 of them to yeah. form an hour than to have this like five minute thing that like gets me through, mm -hmm. you know, I hated that. I hated comics who did that. Mm -hmm. Like don't waste my time. I agree. I don't like watching people go up there and either pontificate or talk about nonsense or just explore their feelings. It's what like, else don't, is going don't, on? Don't do that. Yeah, you fuck know what? you. She's crazy right now. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I, I was reading that. today. I don't know if there's anything here, but I was uh, reading today. You're uh, like, no, figure out if there's something there or not and then go. Well, and there, yeah. are, there are exceptions to the rule, of course. Sure. Um, but I never wanted to be that. I wanted to be my own favorite comic. Oh, you know, and I feel nice. like when I watch you guys, I'm like, you are your own favorite comedians. Like, or you like, that's what you, yeah, that's what your goal was to be. Right. You know, I used to be like every birthday, I'd be like, if I went back in time right now at like 30 years old to my 18 year old self, would my 18 year old self think I was cool? And mm -hmm. it was like, yeah, I'm a comedian. I'm writing for Jimmy Fallon. Like, these are like cool things. Like, I would have been excited. Yeah. And then I got to a point, I was, I think it was like 36 when I was like, why the fuck do I care what any 18 year old thinks? <laughs> yeah. You know what They're I mean? Like useless. who gives a shit that now yeah. I'm just, now I'm, I, I feel more free than I ever have. That's you know, great. Turning 40 and yeah. putting out four hours of comedy. It's like, whatever I do next, no one can complain. 
Yeah. You know. That and is you got, true. You got another show coming up on Comedy Central. Yeah, I've got a, I've got a podcast right now that we just took our, our, our season hiatus. Uh, the Jesselnick and Rosenthal Vanity Project, uh, JRVP. Mm-hmm. Uh, my best friend and I talk. Uh, just it's almost nonsense. We have a couple stories. We talk about our weeks. We're best friends. I'm godfather to his kids. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of like what kind of a person would let Anthony around their children? <laughs> yeah. Um, and we have a lot of fun. We just did 40 episodes, and then I have a TV show coming out in September. Uh, called Good Talk with Anthony Jeselnik on Comedy Central Friday nights at 11 o'clock. And you'll be sitting with other comics? Mm -hmm. I'm sitting with six comics. Uh, We got uh, David Spade, Natasha Leggero, Kristen Schaal, um, Nick Kroll, uh, fuck, Kumail Nagiani, and... I yes. cannot remember. Oh, <laughs> it's only six, man. It was six. And I got, how many did I get? Five. You got five, yeah. right? Yeah. Is it a girl? Sean, Natasha, and I'm forgetting Spade. a girl. David Spade. Kumail. Spade, Kumail, and Kroll. And then we had three girls, Natasha, Sean, and. There's only like five girls. In- <laughs> yeah, there's only five. <laughs> Let me name the other two. Maybe a woman of color? Maybe a woman of color? That's why no. you forgot? No. A Jew. Some Jew broad? God damn it. Natasha, Kristen. I've said this a million times, too. I've had to do it for okay. press. Who's the other girl in showbiz? Let's um, figure out who this is. Who's the other is. female comedian in there? We asked Whitney. Whitney couldn't Whitney do Cummings? it. Whitney Cummings? Whitney couldn't do it. Ali Wong couldn't do it. Oh. Um, Ali, who else has specials? Mm. Well, I just, I, you know, I didn't get invited to your show, but I'm doing David Spade's show pretty soon. So, yeah. no big deal. That's good. Yeah, when are you doing it? It's in August. Someone just texted me and they go, hey, are you free in August to do David Spade yeah, show? Yeah, I got I go, that same text. I got the same text. Do you think that I book television appearances myself through text messages? Is <laughs> that you wrote back? Yeah. <laughs> what they say? He was like, ha He was like, ha ha, sorry. You're right. I'll go through your manager. And I was yeah. like, yeah, I would fuck everything up if I did that. Yeah. You know, even this. Yeah. Like we're friends, but like <laughs> we had like publicists no, involved yeah, yeah, and like, yeah. because I would screw everything up. Well, like, I calendar know. wise, shit gets too, the older you get, you know, we have kids now, we have tour dates. It's like, I, I, yeah, just being like, you're free. It doesn't even work anymore. I need, I need like levels Layers. of communication. Oh, sure. I was doing the TV show and promoting the special at the same time where it was like, guys, I need, I need the, like, I need the show staff the publicist, the manager, the agent, all on the same page because I'm on no pages. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? I'm just like sitting here letting like newspapers fly around in the wind. Yeah. Uh, you guys all need to know that you can't schedule things against each other. Yeah. No, that's cool, man. Uh, people rave about the special, so congrats oh, on that. You. Yeah, thank yeah, you. Thank yeah. you. Fire yeah. in the Maternity Award. Yep. I think it's my best uh, work to date. Love oh the title. God. I wonder if anybody comes out with specials and go like, I think the last one was better, but it's pretty good. You know what I mean? Like, I wonder if anybody actually doesn't think their newest one is the better one. I've seen because of the way Netflix changed things and it was like people could just grab money. Mm -hmm. I've definitely seen specials that I'm like, you just got up there and filled an hour. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, And I can't imagine those people are like, yeah, it was amazing. But I don't. Especially on some, because like people don't, they don't realize the sliding scale of that Netflix pay because they hear about the big ones and then you're like, yeah, dude, no, no, no. They're in their own fucking world. <laughs> like the 20, a special thing is like five people. When I, I had to have a meeting with Netflix to talk about marketing, uh, firing the maternity ward. And I was like, I, they were like, here's our ideas. And I was like, here's my idea. How about to be like from the network that thought it was a good idea to tell everyone what they're paying three comedians <laughs> <laughs> and no one else. And they were just like, uh, Did they love not. that meeting? They, they, yeah. they like smiled uh, uncomfortably. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, from the network that brought you Nanette. Oh, it's Anthony Jesselman. Fucking Nanette. The Nanette. Award. Don't get me started on fucking Nanette. I was, my manager and I were talking oh. about it and she was like, you know, like it's a Nanette when she's like, and I'm like, oh, I haven't seen it. And she goes, what? I'm like, I haven't seen it. She goes, Anthony, you talk about it all the time. <laughs> and I just like saying Nanette Love so much. Me too. I like saying it as a whisper. Yeah. Nanette. Nanette. The most powerful special ever. <laughs> it's very powerful. It's yeah. very powerful. I finally watched it and I was like, none of this applies to me. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? I've never told a self deprecating joke in my life. Yeah. That's I don't true. know what you're talking about. That's true. Yeah. She's got a she's got a Oh. Oh, Tig Notaro. No, he wrote Big Tig, Notaro. Yes. But he just missed Yes, Tig. Yes. Tig was our first guest. Yeah. yeah. I could see how you could forget her. So <laughs> on, um, oh, have you seen this guy, by the way? This yeah, is uh, the, this dude runs a dry cleaner 
no, like dry no, cleaning business not this asshole. in in the Bronx. But just <sighs> like just off. give you a taste. I don't know if you saw him already. already. <laughs> oh God. He's still Everything he posts is like this. Everything. No, okay. buckle up, Jesselneck. <laughs> Everybody, yeah, rise and shine, baby. Hey, is it too early for happy hour? I saw this shit all fucking big way. So we got roadkill this morning. I fucking left. Modelo black shit. Yeah, what the hell? I got my corona for later. I mean, like, why are you watching that? I just, <laughs> <laughs> like, it's not like it went viral. Like, you found that. Yeah. We find a lot of bad yeah. stuff. Yeah. That's what the show is. <laughs> That's what it but is. But is this like every guy in Pittsburgh? I feel like it could be like this. No. 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 Then no, it's like an East Coast thing. He's an East There's Coast guy. He's, yeah. so he's like East a North Coasters. East Coast. Yeah. Pittsburghers are more like blue collar Polish kind of like. My tribes? Yeah. I've been there. It's lovely. It's actually very pretty. Yins, Jagoffs. Yeah. Yeah, I was a little outside of, uh, I was like in the suburbs, just like, you know, a couple minutes outside of the city, but I never got, if I ever said Yins, even like to be funny, my parents were like, shut the fuck up. Really? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's a, into the you know that that's like that's, yes. That's oh, they say yins. Yeah, yeah. Now, were, you, were what were your parents? What did your dad do for a living? Sorry, my dad was an attorney. I mean, he's oh, semi-retired, uh, but like still works. There's a lot of pro bono stuff. He worked for U.S. Steel for a lot of years. At the end, uh, my mom was just a housewife. Yeah, well, five kids, fuck five yeah, should be that five attorney mm -hmm. smart. What's the breakdown? Like, what's the age range? You know it was I mean? five kids in seven years, so it's me. What? Three girls with like a year and a half of between each one of us, oh, and then oh my, my brother gosh. is seven years younger than me. Your youngest? Mm-hmm. Is only seven years younger than you? Yeah. Wow, so they really Damn, went for they it. They went fucking... I think they were like, they wanted to, to have a bigger family, and I think they would have stopped like maybe at three or four, but they wanted another boy. They oh. were like, we'll, we'll try one more, and then like, you know, let's try one more time, and if the, if the last one had been a girl, that would have been it. But they uh, they wanted they wanted two boys, Jesus two boys, Christ. three girls. I, I don't even Jesus. know how people. We were just talking today because our our baby was sick all night. We were yeah. up all night. How people do that? More than you just two. Have the one? Fucking crazy. We have, we have two. two boys two. now. Yeah. One and three. Yeah. It's fucking exhausting. Like your poor mom. Yeah, yeah. We always think about because like oh. two lays us out. We're like, how do people do four, five, five. six? You're like, what the fuck is going on? Their thing was just to get us into activities. Yeah. Like they didn't want yeah. us sitting around the house. Like I was a reader. Uh, so I could I kind of go off on my own, but they were like my my sisters were big in ice skating, so they would like they'd get up early at six to five in the morning and drive them to the skating rink oh, and they'd wow. skate for hours. Oh my god! And then at after school, go skate for hours. That uh, that they just try to keep us busy. Smart. That's what I want to do. Yeah. Um, Sports. Yeah. Preferably martial arts to make them into killers. That's what I'd like. I tried that. And I tried, I tried martial arts. I like I worked in I did jujitsu. I like for like it. a year and like thought I was tough. Mm -hmm. You know, and it wasn't just jujitsu. It was like street smart jujitsu, like what you would really do. That's what I want. And my friends were just annoyed with me. They're like, you, this guy is so <laughs> cocky. And then we almost got in a fight one night outside like a place called Eden Park, which is a very yeah. Pittsburgh like diner. 24-7. What kind of these older kids jump out of a van? And like, you guys want to fight? And I'm like, if we have to fight, we got to fight, you know, like whatever, like totally confident. <laughs> and they go to sw like fake swing at me, you know, where you like, uh, like try to get someone yeah. to flinch. And instead of like doing like a block, I went like, eh, and like, like <laughs> kind of like made that noise and like just put my elbow up. Like I wouldn't have blocked the punch at all. I would have just gotten leveled. And the guys just laughed and got in the van and drove away. I looked at my friends and I was like, I can't believe I've been studying this shit for a year. And that was my reaction to a real yeah. fight. Like I'm done with this. Yeah. Yeah. Like now I box as like an exercise. Oh, I like that. And they'll be like, so do you think you're like a better fighter? And I'm like, I'm not a fighter. No. Like I couldn't fight anyone. I know enough about boxing that I would get my ass handed to me. Yeah. If I ever tried to fight anyone. Yeah. You know, it like teaches you respect for it. Oh my God. I did a boxing. I mean, I box like once a week now with a, with a trainer and even that you'll feel humbled by. But if you go into, I've been to a class with more people and you're doing drills and then you're like, this fucking 16 year old could light me up. Oh my God. Too. And you're like, this kid could kill me. Yeah. <laughs> He's 16. The person who got me into it at first was like literally fought for Bellator. She was a female MMA fighter wow. who like, that was what she did all day and then trained people. And at the end she was like, I'm retiring. I'm leaving. I'm going to like Europe to go to grad school. And she's like, how do you feel about everything? And I was like, I don't know. Like I feel like I've been working on this for like a year. And when we're like sparring, I feel like I'm never like any better. You know, like I'm never like, I haven't gotten good. She's like, Anthony, you're sparring with me. 
<laughs> like I'm a professional. Like yeah. I'm like I'm like I do this all day long, all night long. And so I think about it and I was like, oh, okay. Yeah. I feel better about it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But I like training with girls because you know they will whoop your ass. Yeah. But it's still like it seems more it seems more like exercise. Yeah. Like with a guy you'd get aggro. Yeah. Yeah, that's you know? true. Yeah. I also had this thing like where that. if you're not used to being on the receiving end of a punch, uh, the, like immediately when, like, like for me, when somebody like started, I was like, I was always just like jumping back. They're like, we're, we haven't done it yet. I was like, I know, but I'm waiting for it. And they're like, nah, you can't wait for it. You gotta well, just react. Well, you think about it like in the movies where the, you're not supposed to get hit ever. Like yeah. that's a successful fight is they never touch you. And you're like, yeah. no fights go like that. No. Like you just gotta take the punch in the best way possible right. and then react to it. Yeah. My problem, my frustration is range. Mm -hmm. Like I don't know my own range. So I'm always throwing punches that I can't don't come close to connecting. Right. Uh, and I'm like, w uh, what am I doing? What's going on here? But I what like, did you do? Uh, Kung Fu? Like a punching bag. I did Kung Fu in the park uh, in my late 20s with this like double black belt uh, little Asian girl. And it was fucking great. It was in Griffith Park and we'd meet like every Saturday. That shit would break me down. It was so much exercise. And then mm -hmm. I'd go eat bean and cheese burritos at Yuka's. And then completely negate any sort of yeah. That's the way to do benefits. it. That's what you're yeah. supposed to do. Go to McDonald's after. I train. Most workouts burn between eight and twelve thousand calories. <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Twelve thousand. Yeah. But I loved feeling like I could. It put a level of confidence in my body. You know, not that I was thinking about fighting people, but it did help me stand properly and be like fuck you like my attitude had changed it made you nice. feel less helpless so like yeah. if i had to fight like i would be better off you know than than before like yeah. i have a lot of dreams like nightmares where i need to punch someone but i can't really you that's your I mean? recurring yeah like i just can't even lift my arm that i'm like maybe if i if i if i box like i've got a punching bag that's hanging in my condo like that I use, it's like a, like a, like a nice leather one that I, I use all the time that I just like, I want to rid myself of that anxiety of not being able to throw a punch. I wonder if that is wow. an anxiety dream. Yeah. I have a recurring dream that I still have a day job. It's the last boss that Ooh. I had. Yeah. And I'm like, I'm not a comedian yet and I'm just stuck. I'm trapped, you know, like, oh, I'm doing the same shit every day and I'm same boss. I wonder what that's all about talk about it with my shrink wow what's your reoccurring dream just tying up girls and, and <laughs> putting them in trunks you know that's a but it's like it's a sexual, pleasurable dream. Yeah. yeah it's a fun dream yeah. you know you know like you have a dream where you win the lottery mm -hmm. yeah and then you wake up and you're happy for like a minute yeah, and then yeah. you're like fuck i didn't fuck win the lottery no. i used to have dreams about zombies like n horrible nightmares like night terrors where I was like, I would wake up in the fetal position, totally balled up, like terrified Whew. from these dreams. And I would have them every night, different kinds of zombies. My friends are getting eaten. I know you just know inevitably you're going to die. And I would wake up literally in a covered in sweat, like in a ball. Hmm. And then I would wake up and it was the opposite of the lottery dream. I would look outside and be like, oh, it's, I'm in LA, it's sunny LA. And I would be so happy. Yeah. That I would make myself keep having them. Like I would read oh, you books <laughs> about zombies, oh, no. and I would watch every zombie movie. Because it felt that good to come out of it. Because it felt so good to wake wow. up in the morning and be like, "Oh!" And then yeah. people are like, "You're insane!" Like that's like not something normal people do. But I was like, "No, it feels so." I'd rather like my sleep is awful, mm -hmm. and then my day is like no zombies. <laughs> you know, like, isn't this? But you're having that's terrifying great. dreams. Like if you ever almost had a, been in a car accident, yeah, I just pretend that I was in the car accident, yeah, yeah. and then hit a button. And then erased it. Oh. And then you feel like a god. Like it yes. feels so like really, true. it's a good way to go through life and just pretend the bad things happen. Grateful. And then like you get out of it. Yeah. It's like my, my, my day job dream. And I wake up and I'm like, oh, thank Jesus Christ. I'm just going to go do a podcast, talk about farting for eight hours. I have terrifying, I've had terrifying dreams like huh. of like, there's almost like apocalyptic things happening, you know, and like the, in a car accident, but then, uh, there's people chaos in the streets and i'm trying to get my kids into a safe place really yeah you know terrible. in 15 years you've never told me a dream like you don't dream i do dream you don't share them i, I wish did. you would that's the first time i've ever heard you well, describe a dream that's because anthony's it's here crazy. Speaking of, how did you handle the uh how'd you guys handle the earthquake don't give a shit you weren't like you didn't feel it or you fuck yeah we felt like, it felt it but it didn't scare me because i was here in the 90s in the big earthquake in yes. northridge so i was like this ain't shit uh that one was kind of long. It was like... Yeah, but that ain't shit. It was 10 seconds, man. 
I've never been afraid of an earthquake in LA. Like I've always just been like, this is kind of fun. Like, but that uh, one, the last one, like the last big one that night, like even in the morning, that morning, I'm like in bed and I'm feeling it. I'm hearing things fall downstairs, oh, yeah. but I'm like, yeah, like if, you know, if I go, but I go, whatever, I'm in my bed. And in the evening, there's like, I had decorators come in and do my place. And they put up like a Buddhist like bell, like that you would mm -hmm. ring before you meditate. There's like this red bell mm -hmm. that I've never touched. And things are swaying and I'm like, oh, this is going for a while. And then the bell starts swaying so much it's ringing. Mm. And I'm on the top floor of my apartment building. So people are texting me and they're like, what do we do? What do we do? And it's like, someone's like, don't go outside. And they're like, we should be on the top floor. So if the building collapses, we're first out of the rubble. <laughs> So I'm sitting there hosting like eight people drinking wine and we're just watching the bell <laughs> still swaying. It's not ringing anymore, but it's still going. And we're just Crazy. like waiting for it to stop. And they're like, we should get earthquake kits. And I'm like, we should get helmets. So when we're like <laughs> in the smart, rubble. You're right. Yeah. And then someone's like, asshole, that's not how buildings collapse. Yeah. Like it's going to fall over. <laughs> like being on the top floor is not going to help we're you. We're all going to die for yeah. sure. Yeah. 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 If it's fucked up, it's just fucked up. Wait, let me ask you, you know? this. So when you, because your special just came out like what, a month ago? Like that? Uh, two months ago. Two months ago. Do you, are you right now doing like, 10 15 minute spots or whatever or no i was immediately i tried like i tried to immediately like as soon as i would tape the special i buy a new computer you know and i'm like i start working on the next hour and i had two stories that i liked a lot one was about uh trying to do stand up at san quentin penitentiary <laughs> and one was about some lesbian friends who asked me to be a sperm donor mm -hmm. oh, and God. then we're like we changed our mind <laughs> And so I'm telling those stories and like making them as good as I can. But I'm like, it doesn't really feel like my stand up that I just was like, you know what? Excuse me. I'm, I was going to test these out on stage and then I'm going to burn them in late night on late night shows. Like do them like I'm on the couch oh, telling Seth you. Meyers yeah. this or I'm telling Jimmy Kimmel this. And now I'm starting from scratch. Uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm about to like literally start today. Like I have an idea that I'm going to start working on and see if I can build it out. You know, my last special. I had this abortion story of taking a friend to get an abortion and just it was so fun to write because I would I had the bit and then every night when I was driving to the comedy store I would think of a tag or something new to try and that was fun. It was more than just having a one liner that worked or it didn't. And do you sit at a laptop and type stuff out? Mm -hmm. You do. Yeah. I'm very like I can't write with a pen because I edit and I write I write sentences like I break them up the way that I would pause. Mm -hmm. You know what it'd be like. So I went to the store and bought myself a glass of milk. You know what I mean? Like, it, like I paused. I almost read you like a haiku. Yeah, yeah. So I can see. Because um, you know I, it, your deliveries that way. And yes. And it's easier to see if I have any extra words. Because I want it to be as few words as possible. Smart. And it's like, it's easier if you write. If you just write like a paragraph, you can't really tell. Yeah. Do you Ooh, get into this? Because this is where I'm right now. I was wondering, like, I never talk about it that much with other comics. But like, so I'm like four months. It's your craft. From, from, my, from my craft. I'm very into my craft. But I'm like four months from shooting right now. And, you know, I've been touring for a while. And I feel like, you know, I, I've built up. It's to the point now it could be like an 85 minute show. Not that I would sh release that, but like that's how long the show can go. And I go, I want to be, I want to use my time in town to like work on something else. But I'm like, my mind is just like that 85 minute show. So when I go do spots, I feel like it's it's like masturbatory where it's just a you know, doing 15 minutes from the big show. I, I can't even, I can't get my mind to, once I build a show that size, I have to like shoot it before I can like open up. A hundred percent. I'm exactly yeah. the same way. Okay. Like I'm like, I understand people who do it and I respect it. Mm -hmm. Like Jerry Seinfeld has like two different acts, mm -hmm. you know, like two completely different acts. I can't do that. I've got to have the one and focus on it until I tape it. And then, and then it never do up. it again. Yeah. Never do it again. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So I, you know, it makes me feel good. Um, That's why I'm here. Wait, yeah. hold on. I got to ask you. I love this process because I'm a typer too. I do both. I have journal journals. I make notes, but then uh, I have to have it in my computer exactly as you say with the pauses in there and the, the, the word economy. That's so great. Phyllis Diller said that her big thing was editing, not writing. And it sounds like you're similar because you're every, the economy of, of your words is just fantastic. Oh, yeah, you don't you. waste, you don't waste a frame. Not basically. a yeah. fucking no. syllable. No. How long, I mean, I don't know. Tell me about it. I just you were always like that. more. Though. No, he was from the very beginning. Yeah. yeah. I just, I mean, Jack Handy was my big influence. Ah, and I was like, yeah. I want to be like Jack Handy. And he wrote like that. Oh uh, yeah. And I just found that jokes were better the shorter that they were. Like the, I, I'm aiming for perfection. 
I'm aiming for brilliance. You know, I think yeah. maybe in each of my, maybe I've done four hours of comedy. Maybe I've got 20 jokes that are legit brilliant, you know, but that's what my goal each time. And it's hard to get people to like guess to go the different ways. You've got to have, you know, a red herring in there, throw them off a little bit, think they know where you're, where you're going. And just the shorter it is word wise. And I take long pauses so people can still have their imagination start going. But mm. I want the words to be as short as possible to give them as little wiggle room as possible. I want to lead them right into the kill shoot, if you will. Love See, it. I think a good thing, it. like a really good thing, is that you actually articulate and say that you're going for brilliance. Yes. That you want it to, like, I feel like, I don't know, a lot of comics would be like, like the natural way is to be like, no, I want it to be good, but almost insecure, self-conscious about saying, I want it to be great. You know what I mean? For some reason, there's like a hesitation to, to embrace wanting to be top tier. Yeah, I've never understood that. I've always been like, you want your quarterback to be the most confident guy in the world, whether he's right or wrong. You right, know, right. that uh, people are like, I'm not an artist, man. I'm just a guy who goes up on stage and grabs a mic and I'm like, you are. I'm an artist. Yeah. You know what I mean? I take this very fucking seriously. Yeah. People pay money to come see me and I want them to know that I'm like, I've given this my absolute best and I think it's brilliant before I go on tour again. I'm not fucking I love around. that. I love it. I love it. Would you consider yourself a perfectionist? <sighs> no, but I would consider myself more sensitive to embarrassment than most people that I really feel it. Like, I don't mind bombing, I understand it's part of it, mm -hmm. but I really feel it that I'll make sure that doesn't happen again. Mm. You know, if, I do, if I'm doing crowd work and it goes wrong, I know goddamn well how I'm gonna handle it next time if that situation pops up. You know, I would call it like chinks in your armor. Mm -hmm. You know, that like, you, you're, you're wearing this vet suit of armor, you get a hole in it, you patch it up, no one's breaking through that patch right. know, ever again. So I just think I'd like, I think I take it more seriously than some people do. Like you see comics do the same joke that doesn't work over and over again. Right. And you're like, I would try it twice maybe and then be out of there, you know, and mm. like come up with a new joke because I can't stand. I'll have jokes that I think are great and the audience is like, no, this is not great. I'm like, you don't get it. And they'll talk me out of it after four or five times because I'm like, why am I dealing with this? Right. You know? Why, yeah. Sorry, you mean why am I sticking to why this am thing? I take, why am I taking the L on this joke? Right. You know, it's a dead silence every time. <laughs> right. You know, right. What, what's the point? It is insanity yeah. sometimes where you can fucking tour for 16 months and do a joke 180 times and be like, man, it's always like a six or a seven or something, right? Mm -hmm. And then one day, for whatever reason, you're tired and you say it differently and it becomes better and you're like, motherfucker, like I, I can't believe I stuck to saying it the mediocre way for that long. But it is something where like, you, I don't know if it's like being married, like being precious with it, but you're just, in my mind, sometimes I'm like, that's how the joke goes. It goes this mediocre route and then you need a surprise to take you out of it. Mm -hmm. With me, I, I don't mind leaving a couple cards hanging if you will mm -hmm. you know someone's like i got I, I could guess that joke it's like yeah i want you to guess a couple right because then that really fucking knocks you over when i when i come up with the one that you think you've got yeah. you know like yeah. if you can't guess any of them then you give up but if you can guess a couple then you're like you're hanging on my every word trying to get there that's true and you can really knock someone see, do, so do you feel like the audience is playing that game with you a lot or they're like let's see where they are i with can you. hear people whispering oh, like it's almost like nah. watching jeopardy you know, wow. someone's like, what is, uh, true. what is like a, a hippopotamus? <laughs> so you know, annoying. like, I hate it. Yeah, yeah, I would hate that too. Like, stop fucking trying to guess the punchline, dickhead. Yeah, let just, me, let me entertain you. Let me give you the surprise. Yeah, just sit back it's my and job. enjoy it. Yeah. It's like, it'd be like watching a movie and being like, they're going to get together but in the end. You're like, <laughs> I know. dickhead, we know. But you don't stop. have to say it. Stop, yeah. So, um, that's so fun. Do you said you're not on TikTok though, or you are? I don't even know what it is. Okay. TikTok is um, an app. <laughs> where people put uh why don't you explain it well okay it's kind of like um it's like a vine but with music and so people can like lip sync along to their favorite songs right so it's just like you just browse through people but i've curated a special collection um of people that don't necessarily play music but they're just special are you guys asking me to leave? <laughs> <laughs> are we? Do we? Are we going to show him? I mean, I, my I, special curations. I would. I I'm was on the gram. I've noticed you're not on the gram. No. Why is that? Okay. 
That's not very a, upsetting. I'm not, not a picture guy. I feel like it's, I just, it seems show offy to me. It is. Um, and I, and people who do yeah. it, I'm like, yeah, I totally get it. Uh, even Twitter, if I get like Twitter's like, I can put my tour dates up. I can be like retweet things. That's fine. I'm not on Facebook. Uh, it's, and I just, Instagram didn't interest me. And then everything that's come out after Instagram, I've just been like, no. Yeah. I don't blame you, but I'm like cool and hip and I like to keep up with stuff. <laughs> I don't blame people who have it. It's just not yeah. for me. Well, no, I know, but you're not cool. <laughs> you're not like, is... trying to keep up with stuff. You're showing the same ones. Haven't I sent you fresh ones? These are the fresh ones. I mean, I carry it. Why do I go through such lengths to bring you good I content? I mean, the everything? disdain that you have in your face is right on. It's it's exactly where it should be. I mean, the fact that she keeps using the word curate, yeah. like she's fucking Indiana Jones. <laughs> this is, by the way, what I have to fucking fall asleep to. Like, I'm, I'm in bed watching actual entertainment. No, he watches serial killers, Fine, murder. Whatever. You watch murder shows and stuff before you go to bed? I used to. I got like I got just murdered out. Yeah, you did. Yeah, it was like making a murderer was like I was just like I've seen this story too many. Like I just know, I know the beats. Yeah, you know what I mean. That yeah. I'm just like I'm over it. It's like if you watch the first forty eight, you're like you watch enough of them and you're like I got it. I got it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I know. Well, that's what happened with. I think like most studio movies now too. It's like I watch a trailer. I'm like I already know this movie. You know what I mean? Like as soon as mm -hmm. you see the trailer, I'm like, unless it, for some reason I want to see it, I know the movie front to back. <laughs> yeah. I mean, he gets mad at me because we'll be watching a movie and I'll get up to go take a piss or something. And he, and he's like, you're not going to ask me to pause it. I'm like, I'll figure it out. It's not that fucking complicated. Yeah. There's nothing happening. Here. But like, I can't wait tonight for the documentary of uh, the girl who got her boyfriend to kill uh, himself. Yeah. I've, like, I can't wait for is that. that. Is that on, on HBO? It's a two part HBO thing oh, starting tonight. Anthony. I love the one about the inventor. The girl who like was like, I've got this blood thing. You know, oh, I love the Thanos. Oh, the, yeah. yeah, we saw Fraud, that. Thanos. Frauds are amazing. Fra great. I love fraud frauds stories. Frauds are good. Con yes. stories are great. Yes, great. I did too. Have you ever read the book, uh, 48 Laws of Power? No. It's a, it's a, I mean, it's a cliche book almost. And it's like the 48 things you do if you want to attain power. And like mm. self-help kind of. But each law is filled with stories of people throughout history who either succeeded with that law or fucked it up and were killed because of it, that it's like one of the most interesting books I've ever read. And most really? of them are con artists. Mm. It's like, this is the guy who sold the Eiffel Tower to a businessman and here's how he did it. You know, like yeah. when he thought the guy was wavering, he asked him for a bribe, you know, cause the guy was like, this is too good to be true. And it was like, how about a little something for me? And it was like, okay, I trust you now. Here's, here's the, here's the mm. money for the Eiffel Tower that like, I love stuff. Like I that. love those con stories. Yeah. That was like that. Um, the catch me if you can thing too. Remember like with yeah. the, that, too. the cat, that guy was like the ultimate con. Mm -hmm. I feel like you can, you can't even be that good of a con now with digital technology. Oh, it's, I mean, I think you just have to be, you have to be like a hacker. Yeah. You know? Yeah. You gotta be like Rihanna in a movie. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, oh, why don't you show Anthony okay. what you curated? This is one of my talents that I found. I'm sure he'll love this. I swear, if I give one more comment saying that I'm obsessed, psycho, or look like Dwight from The Office, your ass is going to get blocked. You hear me? You will be blocked. You're nothing but a over a bulk caddis. To put it bluntly, a weed. Okay. You want to get on when TikTok? So what? So, what, uh, what, so, so okay, yeah, no, no. Okay, all, there's yeah. a lot of preoccupation with haters. And how do you deal with the haters and the people that aren't into your TikToks? And that was just one approach. <laughs> but so that was that was just a girl filming herself yeah. saying those yeah. words. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And it's you're supposed to do music and stuff, but some people choose not to. And those that's the avenues. Those are the avenues I choose yeah, to go down. More. Give them more. Is she trying when to be funny or is she addressing her haters? No, she, I think she's addressing her haters. And this, buys the croissants instead of the biscuit ones. Listen here, I'm not British, you fucking twat. I want my fucking biscuits. I don't want no bagel croissant, the fucking knob. That one I kind of like because it was amusing and I like this dance move and I like the rhyme and stuff. How do you, I mean, amusing <laughs> it wouldn't be the word I would use. First, it's not that I'm horny all the time. It's just that you are always so fucking sexy. This gentleman likes to wear um, vampire teeth a lot, and he sometimes dances with handcuffs. She knows them. She knows what them. What do you whole. think? I still don't understand what TikTok <laughs> is or why it is. I live my life by a simple credo. 
You stand behind me, I'll protect you. You stand beside me, I respect you. You stand against me, I'll end you. What if you stand in front of him? What if you're just like in line <laughs> at the vape store? <laughs> like, how does he feel about you that? <laughs> what do you think, though? I w- I'll tell you what I think. Yeah. I can't wait until these people start trying to do stand-up. Yeah. Because they always do. Yeah. I loved watching YouTube stars and Vine stars go get their lunches eaten. <laughs> yeah. Uh, trying to make a living on stage. On stage. It was, it's always great. Like, the people from Girl Code would go on a tour and you'd be like, I'd love to see that. <laughs> I would love to go watch Well, that. you know what ended up happening with a lot of those too is like, because I remember, I remember when that show was like first huge <laughs> and, and, I, and I would show up at a club and they were like, oh, someone from Girl Code was here and I'm like oh how'd that go and they're like oh like sold out like eight shows I'm like what this person who's like and they're like 21 and I was like was it good and they're like well she had like 20 minutes so then her friend did 20 and then another we brought in somebody else locally that did 20 and then we realized that wasn't enough so the next day we had to get two more locals to each do 20 and I was like and and they're like oh the the audience seemed to her fans loved it yeah okay (laughs) I mean, like eight shows sold out here from that shit. And that was like immediate. And they all had that for a minute. But mm-hmm. then. Oh, it goes away immediately. Yeah. I mean, as soon as that, as soon as the show's off the air or like they see you once and they'll do it because they just want to see you. Yeah. And yeah. Meet you after. Like if you didn't do a meet and greet after that, there'd be a riot. Yes. But they do those and then the f- people just forget about them. And hey guys. Yeah. That's, that's, yeah. My, that's your first five. But how's, there, <laughs> how's everyone doing? How are we doing? Guys, I love you, okay. and I love that you love me. Uh, but they're they're capitalizing off. No, they are. I mean, yeah, I get it. Do I have any other ones to show? The TikToks. Uh, um, I, I'll, I'll bring up a, a batch from last week. Yeah, oh, okay. I mean, uh, yeah, I mean, Anthony was really so into it, so I don't want to like make him feel like he didn't get what he wanted. No, I. Anthony will appreciate because I saw a smile on his face. He doesn't smile very often. Now oh, we're fucking yeah. talking. I'm yeah. smiling in a no. way of the, like, I'm not smiling by, about what you think I'm smiling about. <laughs> <But> <laughs> I'm not smiling what you, with what you think I'm smiling what do you mean? about. But, but you enjoy mental illness as much as I do. Oh my God. I feel like you do. Sure, but not, this is like. This is this a good one for you. This, this is, is a good. good one. If someone was taping this guy without his knowledge, I'd be like, "All right, let's let's watch." <laughs> Never date a yandere. Yandere is the Japanese line for basically a woman who loves you so much she's willing to kill anybody who basically lays eyes on you, trying to get a hold of you. And I know some of you in the comments are gonna say, "Huh, you never have someone like that." To be honest, I wouldn't want someone like that. Because she would kill my sister, my mother, my grandparents, anybody who even looked at me remotely. They'd be dead because she's so lovey-dovey that she goes insane and then wants to trap me in a fucking basement. Good night. Yay, wait. No, I mean, she will legit. Uh, I like to watch these. So so these can be as long as as you want. You don't get 10 seconds to TikTok. You can TikTok all night if you want no, to. No, they're they're capped at like 30 seconds or something. Oh, I don't fuck. know. But some, some of them feel longer. So than what did you, definitely. I mean, that's a good one, right? I don't understand why he's talking about like a Japanese thing when he's clearly describing a Puerto Rican woman. <laughs> <laughs> this is, uh... oh, you got more? Yes. Oh, yeah. This was really hey, cool. Yo, I got four panties. <laughs> one, two, three, four. Bait you. No one cannot catch it. Throw it up and catch all of them at one time. <laughs> ah, I did. What's up? Do you guys do this with every guest? Or were you like, Anthony's coming in. We got to do something nice for him. Let's show him a bunch of the worst people in the world who also have cameras on their phone. I just wanted you to what, get it. What was your expectation? <laughs> I just want to spread joy. I just wanted to know what you thought. I feel like you're this an is, insightful person. This is literally, <laughs> I'm not exaggerating, what's going on two feet from me at night. As, as I got here like, and then your faux panties going. I'm like, what? And then she's like, oh, I'm watching TikToks. I'm like, okay. And then she's like, oh, you're watching a serial killer documentary? You're crazy. I'm like, I think you might be crazy. You're, you're actually staying on this app for an hour. I enjoy it. 
Well, you know why? I find entertainment. Okay, guys, <laughs> we're gonna do a guy acting like a cow. <laughs> See, these these remind me of like when American Idol, like when the people would come on and they knew they were bad. Yeah, and they yeah. were like trying to, and it was like, this isn't the same. It's I want you good. to, th I want you to think you're good. Yes. and fail. I'm with that you. That would be funny. These yes. people, this guy. It's a pretty good cow impression, but I, I get No, I think yeah. he's sincere. Are you doubting his sincerity? The his guy was like, look at my teeth. How can I get into showbiz one way and one way only? I'm going to be a cow. And then he did know. that. He seems yeah. pretty simple. Look. Here's a little funny story. Oh, Jesus Christ. My friend just texted me and told me my ex Perry is in jail. I wish I could find out for what, but I don't know. If anybody can find out for me, let me know. Okay. Thanks. I think, all right. I feel like I'm on a date with the cheese on, sorry. <laughs> like you got, I've told you I'm not interested. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing about my body language has told you that I'm into this. Okay. And yet you persist. You can cut it. <laughs> oh, that was hilarious. Yeah, it feels like an awkward fingering. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay. I just thought, I don't know, it's something you'd be into. What? <laughs> You didn't like okay. it. All right. I'm so glad. I mean, I hated it. I, I yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. Thank you. Like, I hated but it. But that's what happens at first, and then you get you push past that, and then it starts to get fun. Yeah, I could send you a link if you want <laughs> to. Uh, we could put them all together for you. I mean, sometimes I wonder, like, what would life be like if I had kids? And now I know. Yeah. You would be into that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's really a limited. I don't leave the house very often, so <sighs> I gotta look for fun on the internet. You should, maybe you'll find it one day. Yeah. <laughs> Unbelievable. Okay. He didn't like it, so what? Yeah, he didn't like it. So he definitely show him your violent stuff. Like what? Your all-time smash hits. Oh, okay. Maybe I bet you like mine funny. more. I guarantee I like yours. Uh, there's, oh, I, there's no way I could like shit. it less. Well, yeah. you two are, you know, okay. beer I brothers. could be getting beaten up in these videos, and I would like it more than yeah. what we just saw. Say. Joy, look at the laughter on his face. He hasn't had this much fun this whole time. <laughs> I told you. Look how, look how happy he is now. <laughs> you sick fucks, both of you are Look at this guy. What's up? Everything cool? <laughs> <laughs> that is the biggest smile I've ever seen on no, his I'm, face. He's never laughed that hard in his whole life. That was great. That was yeah. great. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Woo. Yeah. Get that guy a TikTok, man. <laughs> <laughs> Woo. Ah, what's oh, this no. One? Oh, it's another car. Yeah. I remember. This one you'll like even more. So was, that, was that like a remote control car that guy was try, where he was trying to guide someone who didn't know how to drive? He ba It was a guy driving stick who I think was like, <laughs> didn't, didn't know how to do it. Didn't know how to pull off that, <laughs> that clutch, you know? Uh, smart to stand in front of a guy like that. Yeah, totally. <laughs> With Read some, yeah. <laughs> <sighs> so that was Taiwan. Now we're over with the Ruskies. You know, they don't give a fuck about human life. <laughs> Look how happy Anthony is. Uh, it is yeah. so much better. I mean, yeah. there's drama. Yeah. You know what I mean? You're there's like, excitement. Yeah. Yeah. You believe the screams? Yeah. What about the one, um, the airlift? And the dog. Do you have the one of the the seventy year old woman being airlifted out of the park? Oh. Now that one, I I would. That one you That one behind. really makes me. I gotta look for it. Give me. A yeah, second. yeah. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah, we ended up having to. Uh, we had to cut out something from last week. <laughs> I didn't realize. <laughs> I was like, it's pretty funny. And then they're like, that guy's dead. And I was like, oh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Because we found out that the uh, the Taiwanese guy, the one with the car backed into, 
you know, like when Dr. Drew came on, he's like, his legs are for sure gone. <laughs> and then we found out a, a listener in Taiwan was like, this was actually on the news here. And amazingly, that guy was fine. He, he didn't okay. have shattered legs or anything. Huh. Yeah. But this is pretty fun. This one's perfect. So this is a 74 like <laughs> year old woman who was on a hike. I've seen this. Oh, you've seen it. Okay. Yeah. Play it anyways. Right. It gives me a gig. Yeah, it is kind of fun. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> well, I got to let him back down. Try to get out of control. <laughs> 74. <laughs> like, my mom is in there right now. <laughs> I didn't know they kept trying to lower it back down and bring it back yeah. up. I thought they just was like, all right, we'll do this. We'll do I didn't it. know that that's what was happening either. Look how much, <laughs> much momentum. <laughs> Holy shit. Yeah. They're going to try to. There you go. There's a slow. Slow that down. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this way, all the, the vomit and shit that's tied up in there will kind of <laughs> sink towards the feet. Force. Jesus. Yeah. yeah. <sighs> oh, oh, that's man. good times. What do you like watching, Anthony? What makes you laugh besides murder stuff like Tom likes? Um, what makes what me laugh? What are you laugh? watching right now? Can you even watch comedies? No, I don't watch a lot. You know what I loved that I recently saw was um, uh, I Think You Should Leave. Oh my that God! Sketch show. Tim Robinson. Tim Robinson. Oh, did we watch that? So yes. Yeah, we tore through that. It is so tore funny. through it yeah. one night and <laughs> so was just good. like losing it. Funny. Yeah, that was good. That that's the, the hardest that stuff. Gets me. Yeah. Absurdism gets me. Yeah. People are like, "Oh, this is dark. You'll love it." Like this. That's what I do, and I do it better than whoever the fuck you're recommending. So <laughs> I don't need to watch it, um, and it's not going to inspire me. It's just going to eliminate things that I maybe could have done. Yeah. That uh, that I love a really absurd. Yeah, me too. And and what I really enjoy is a, a straight man. You know what I mean? Like, and especially in Tim Robinson's show, the people who are playing the straight men, like in that opening sketch where he has to open the door. Yeah. And when it cuts back to the boss, just yeah. looking at him with like a total it's blank so face funny. is <laughs> hilarious to me. Like those things really killed me. Well, the, the best thing funny, of, uh, like to me, it. I love that that show takes, it will take an absurd, you know, a premise or like an angle on something, but commits so hard to, like keep it grounded. Mm -hmm. And you know, like when he gives the present to the guy, um, like, the, the like receipt it? thing is <laughs> yeah, amazing. That was fun. My favorite though. What was your favorite? What was your favorite sketch of the whole thing? That party one, the one where they're at the party and the gift. The receipts. Yeah, yeah. the yeah. receipt is great. I mean, I love the 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 car, the old guy car thing. You know, oh, that was Everyone, the best that, one. That's what, honestly, it was my least favorite. Really? really? Yeah, I loved I love that right. guy. Uh, for me, the baby pageant. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, that it was, was so good. fun. Yeah. When like the audience when they like, do the in memoriam, <laughs> Brett Hart, and yeah. he goes like, they don't normally say how they die on the thing, and it's like every it's like an old person with like throat slashed, yeah, <laughs> run over yeah. by a dumb truck. Yeah, that was yeah. like killing me so. Yeah, funny. the cutest baby. Like he, they just killed it the whole way through, man. That that's I mean, it was a great amount of time. It's like 16, 17 minutes. You mm -hmm. just can just like. Oh my god! And then they, it got reordered. Yes. So that was that was awesome. Yeah. That, like you watched it and you were like, "Oh, this is why uh, SNL isn't like what it used to be." Yeah. Because you know, like they people like this aren't allowed to do what what uh, what they used to do. Right. You know. It was I think so good. He wrote. He was a writer on SNL, and he was a, he got hired as an actor, and then they demoted him to writer, which is like the most humiliating shit ever. It's like just fire mm. me. Yeah. Don't like make me do this. Uh, but he is just amazing on that show. So funny. That's the fun. That's the funniest thing that I've seen in a long time. Where I like, I actually enjoyed it and felt like I felt like a kid watching stuff. You know, mm -hmm. when you like used to watch your favorite show as a kid, and you're just like howling. But you're 14. That's how I felt watching that show. Mm -hmm. And there, I had so many friends who were like, "Oh, in episode three, this thing happens," and I'd be like, "Afterwards, I'd be like, what was it? What was it?" And he's like. When he says they use their bones for money, I just kept rewinding. Like yeah. everyone had their own Little favorite moment. thing that I was yeah. like, "These are all, <laughs> these are all amazing." The, oh, I love the fucking, I loved the taco uh, restaurant date where he's like, "Can you go?" He tells the server, <laughs> so "She's eating like all the good tacos, yeah, like the, yeah, the nachos, the, the nachos, yeah. and she's eating all the good ones." And like, can you sit and go, "Do you want me to talk <laughs> so to her?" So true, though. About, yeah, and you like you feel like yeah, that way sometimes, like, right? The good stuff. And then she and he comes over and she's like, "Did you tell him to say?" He's like, "No." <laughs> yeah, I laughed like ten minutes straight at that. There are sketches that Tom and I for the last fifteen years will reference. Even, like Tim and Eric stuff. Yeah, a couple weird ones. We like, like tiny hats. You ever seen that sketch? 
Tiny yes. House isn't open on Sunday. They yeah, are now. Still oh, say that's that. a good one in our house. I was big. I was a huge Mr. Show with yeah. uh, Bob and David yeah. guy. Yeah. So much so that when I got into comedy, I was like, I'm going to be like Bob Odenkirk. Yeah. I'm going to oh. be like these guys. And then they did a tour. It was called Hooray for America. Like right after 9-11, they did a tour that was just like a best, greatest of or whatever. And I was like so excited. Like, And I had no money when I moved out here. But I bought two tickets. They were the worst tickets in the house. And then they added a second show after that. So it was like, fuck, I could have gotten better tickets, whatever. But I go and they were having mic problems. It was all, mm. They were on wireless mics and there's so many of them. Always wireless mics like, suck. Yes, that it was like, it just kept cutting in and out. You couldn't hear anything. That I was, And then they, were like, they, they had to do a second show. So they were like, sorry, like good night. And I was so devastated that I was like, fuck those guys. Like fuck them forever. And it like honestly probably saved me as a comic. Because mm-hmm. I would have kept so many guys were going down that Bob and David road yeah, yeah. that it made me like reject it just by seeing that show that I'm like that upset you like, so much. Yeah, I was. Wow, pissed. you're you're very much into like that door's closed and the door is closed. Yeah, mm-hmm. with the wow. Well, I, I bet when you right. cut someone out of your life, they're fucking Oof, out dead to right? you. Oh, 100. Yeah. percent I've had people like be like, I really want to apologize for it. And I'm like rejected <laughs> <laughs> wow i remember yeah. doing the groundlings in like 2002 going to school there and discovering bob uh the mr show and going to one of those the video stores and renting all and being like this is same thing like this is amazing in college i would try to get people to watch it my friends to watch because it, it was on when we were in college and they were like what is it we don't care this is stupid <laughs> yeah when i was in high when i was in like eighth grade i tried to get people to watch the ben stiller show and no one watched that like i was the only one who was into things like that mm. i took a groundlings class when i first moved out here i did a little bit of stand-up and i was like i'll take some improv too and i get into like the 101 class and i'm like and really enjoying it and it's like all these like dorks who think they're going to be on <laughs> snl in three years mm. and they're all the same but I'm the funniest guy in the class, like no doubt. And at the <laughs> so end of the modest. class, they send us all out into the hallway and they're like, we're gonna call you in one by one and we're gonna tell you if you're gonna skip a level, uh, go to the next level or retake this level. And every, we're talking and everyone's like, oh, Anthony, like you're definitely skipping a level. I'm like, oh, thank you. Like, I hope you do too. Like, yeah. I'll see you guys like on, the, like on the main stage. And I go in the room and the woman goes, uh, Anthony, uh, you're gonna retake one on one. And I go, no. I go, what are you talking about? Like, I'm the funniest guy in the class. And she goes, yeah. She goes, you're funny and you can't teach funny. So that's like, you know, good for you. Uh, you have a head start, but we're trying to teach you how to be other other people, different characters here. And you're always Anthony. And, you know, I kind of took like a Norm MacDonald approach of like, I'm, I'm these different characters, but I'm always still me. Yeah, yeah. And I just went, you know what? Anthony's fucking hilarious. And I got up and left Look and never you. took improv again. Went and just did, Look like, I was you. like, I'm going to do stand up. Like, yeah. stand up's for me. And I wonder if I would be like a better actor now if I had kept on doing a little improv. Hmm. But I just could. And maybe if UCB had been around. Yeah. Maybe it'd be different. No, you did but the right I, thing. I, I went to like a Groundling show and I was like, this is what we're fucking doing. Oh, it's to the do. garbage. Where did you get this from? This belief in yourself? Did your mom tell you you were great? Or did they tell you you were a piece of shit? I, t- I mean, neither one. I mean, they they were always like, you know, you're not special, but like you're smart. You read a lot. You know, you 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 could do great things. I think the confidence just came from you know proving myself. Of like, I the, the one of the hardest things about stand up comedy is just how scary it is. Yeah. And once you get through that, you know, then I was like, okay, like I did, I conquered. No, but that you've thing been at least. you've been like this since day one. I feel like I feel like even as a little twenty year old baby comedian but you, when you were, had something you, in you that was con- like you to tell the groundlings to go fuck themselves you know that you don't do that at 20 something you no. go like oh they know better than me <laughs> maybe they're right well, not these do guys. i mean if i had seen their show and it was like amazing i would be like oh like my big thing in la was comedy death ray yeah comedy bang bang that. largo yeah, yeah i was like these guys are cool if i can get in with them that means i'm cool too and so i built my act trying to impress them and once i got in there once I did, they had like a, you know, best new comedian show and I killed on it that I was like, okay, like I'm on the right path. And then the confidence grew. Like it started out as fake. That's what I was, that's what I was oh, about to say. Okay. So you had to have been like knowing that like, it's probably a lane and you want to be that, but it's not genuine until, it, until you earn it. Exactly. You're just like, you're being deadpan because you're so nervous yeah. and it becomes confidence because you're like, oh no, now I believe this. Yeah. Like, and it goes from even like, now I believe it to now I know it. Mm-hmm. 
that like that's even a, like another step of confidence. That if someone was like, "I despise you and everything you've, you've ever like done in comedy," I'd be like, "Doesn't affect me in the least." Yeah, I'm the you shit. Know? I know it. It'd yeah. be like watching a mosquito on TV. Yeah, <laughs> you know, like you can't you can't affect me at all. Yeah, yeah. That's just that's time. great. You fake it, fake it till you make it. For sure. Yeah. For sure. Um, <laughs> if you have not yet seen Fire in the Maternity Ward. Watch it. It's on Netflix. Look out for the Comedy Central show coming up in September. Good talk with Anthony Jeselnik up from September on Friday nights. And the podcast? Uh, the Jeselnik and Rosenthal Vanity Project, JRVP. Uh, JRVP. Find it wherever uh, podcasts are, uh, are sold. I'm so glad we were able to do this, man. And Absolutely. I hope, I pray that maybe, just maybe, you have uh, influenced the Chris, Christina to stop TikToking. I was I was hoping you were going to say I'd hope you'd come back as a guest Mano. and I was going to be like <laughs> I thought he was going there too maybe if Christina gets some more TikToks <laughs> you know for like thank a, well, you we refilled the TikTok you have an well. open thank invite you. anytime you want to come on we would I'd love to have love you to. on thank you you're the best you're the best Anthony thank you this is uh, YMH Rap by the Cinemas see you guys next week I'll keep the jeans high and tight Piss on me, beat me and try it out I just might Got a new private jet from mommy P, let's take flight Got a chain like Tommy Buns But it's not as bright Yeah, no invite So you can't come like Josh Potter I'm a champ so you know I drink my water You're a mommy, oh cool Nice to meet ya to all the beautiful ladies, let me eat ya More than a splash of milk, I kill barista Don't prolapse your anus, what did doctors do teach ya? I disabled this beat, completely retarded I got the fart mic, but I think I shartered Whoa, Uncle Terry, Tom and Josh are very hairy Need to manscape all the berries while I sleep up on my luxury mattress That I got from Safa You want your mom's house wraps, then I got ya uh, just glassing with Robert Paul Good morning Julia I even built these walls In the Lambo doing donuts with Tommy Buns Catch me at your mom's house That's hardcore fun Hi, thank you for watching that episode of Your Mom's House Please continue to watch more You can see all these were my hands gesturing You can click on those And please subscribe if you have not yet And subscribe button And then we'll get your money Thanks.